Welcome back to Kind of Funny's DCEU in review. One of the final times we will visit this iteration of the DC universe. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes, and I'm joined by the Nitro Rifle himself, Andy Cortez. What a fitting end. The producer slash producer, Nick Scarpino. Hope. And... <laughs> One of the biggest DC fans I know, Greg Miller. Remember, it's not over, Andy. He's still got oh. Aquaman. Like that, you know what I mean? Oh, like, and Blue Beetle. Yeah. Which, of Don't course, forget. is the first DCU character. This is a DCEU movie, though. You but know, that DCU character will be there. That will then be part of the DCU when the Superman legacy kicks off the DCU. It's the first sense. movie. Of course. Makes total sense. Everyone's extremely excited. How could anybody Probably. be, you know be confused about any of it yeah it's impossible <laughs> um if you're confused you might want to start where it all began you can listen to every single interview we have ever done of the dceu by going to youtube.com slash kind of funny or searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review and if dceu is not your thing is your thing whatever it is we review recap and rank every single movie franchise out there so go check it out andy cortez what's Russian, right? i'm just immediately reminiscing on doing the snyder cut in review during covid and movie. I'll be in home, working from home. And there was a moment where <laughs> Greg saw Grover the Muppet and just, in, <laughs> just hallucinated that there was a puppet. You in watch it. a black and white four by three movie in the middle of the night. Things are going to happen the next day. <laughs> For about seven hours. Oh, no. He has a Coke, everybody. Oh, oh no. Shit, here oh, we no. Are, I got to go fast. <laughs> he has to go fast. Uh, you know, I want to let everybody know right now. This will be spoiler-filled, and uh, there's definitely things to spoil in this movie, so if you do not want to be spoiled, now is your time to turn away, go watch the movie or whatever, don't watch the movie, and then come back and watch and listen to this when you are ready to be fully spoiled, because we're going to get all into it. Um, beyond all of that, remember, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny yep. to get the show ad-free, watch yep. it live as it's being recorded, just like our Patreon producer Nathan Lamothe has done. Thank you so very, very much. Today, we're brought to you by Honey and Rocket Money, but... I will get to all of that later. Today, we're talking about The Flash. And at the top, let's address one of the elephants in the room, right? Ezra Miller, ladies and gentlemen, has done horrible things and has been accused of other horrible things. At no point are we ignoring that or acting like that hasn't happened. However, of course, we want to drive home the fact that being bad to each other is bad and Kind of Funny does not endorse that. And we tell you not to do that. And we ask you to be a better person and be the change you want to see in the world. However, of course, this movie's out. Uh, DCEU is one of our sh in review is one of our shows. Uh, from everything you've heard, right on top of uh, uh, what do you call it? legal proceedings? Legal proceedings are happening and stuff like that. They're trying to get Ezra Miller help, apparently, something to that effect. We're not here to commentate on all of that business, right? Don't be horrible to each other. Don't be horrible. Never impose your will on somebody. Never be forceful with somebody else. Never uh, violate personal boundaries. Don't be a dick. We've talked about this a million times. Don't be a fucking dick. Be cool. Ezra Miller has clearly been a fucking dick and a horrible person, and we are not at all condoning that. That sucks. Amen. Statement made. That's, that's what it is. So we're talking about The Flash. Runtime of two hours and 24 minutes, released on June 16th, 2023, uh, directed by uh, Andy Muschietti, uh, born in 1973, an Argentine filmmaker who achieved wide recognition uh, with his 2013 film Mama, uh, which he made with Neil Cross, uh, which eventually got him landing the It franchise. So he, he directed um, It back oh. in 2017, uh, which was a, a big hit, and he, mm. it, he directed The Flash here, and he will be directing the live action adaptation of Attack on Titan coming at some point. Uh, the music in the movie was done by Benjamin Mark Lasker, uh, who is a British composer that worked on uh, Shazam, Blade Runner 2049, It, It Chapter 2, The Invisible Man, and a couple other things like that. This has a budget of $220 million, but we do not yet have any um, predicted uh, box office or anything because it's a little too early. But with all of that out of the way, Greg, you've been waiting for this movie for a very long time. This is one of the first DCEU movies to, to be announced in the slate back in uh, 2014, I want to say Jesus. it was. Um, it might even have been 2013. Uh, we, we finally have it. It's here. There's been a lot of talk, a lot of hubbub. What did you think about The Flash? You say we've been waiting. I've been waiting a long time, obviously, as a DC fan. I think it's kind of impossible to put it into words how long I've been waiting uh, for what this movie would turn out to be. Uh, at, you talked about it opening on the 16th, uh, June 16th, 2023. We're recording this on June 14th, 2023. 
10 years ago, one decade to the day is when Man of Steel came out. It's funny, of course, because it would be a touchstone memory for me of leaving the E3 war room early to go to a WB advanced screening of Man of Steel. And of course, we just came back from the new E3 SGF. And I came into work the next day in the war room. Rich George ran over to me, knelt down beside me at the table. And of course, Rich was in charge of Nintendo at the time. Before that, he'd been in charge of comics. He's a huge comic book fan to this day. Sometimes comes to the movies with us back in the day. And he's like, how was it? Eyes wide, huge grin. And I said, it, it's, it's, it's good. And he went, oh, no. If you're saying it, it's good, it's bad. And if you've listened to DCEU in review, I've said many a time, this is not, as a diehard DC fan from literal birth, these aren't the movies I would have made. These aren't the choices I would have made, but I try to go in and find what I want out of them and get characters and stories and things like that and yada, yada, yada. The Flash is the DCEU I would have wanted. The Flash is the first time I've watched one of these movies, and, not, and, and I was surprised how fast I was able to put any of the nitpick shelf stuff, any, all on the shelf, just get it out of my head, and I was able to sit there with a dumb grin on my face and watch this entire movie. Uh, I'm going to steal some stuff you and I talked about after the fact, but it was that, for good and bad, this is a comic book brought to life. I honestly feel like this doesn't feel like a Marvel movie. Like, don't get me wrong, it's superheroes. There's touchstones for a million different things. And again, both good and bad, that doesn't feel like a Marvel movie. But this feels like if I, when I was a kid in my goddamn bedroom with my Justice League paper mobile I took from Graham Cracker Comics when they closed, reading Wizard Magazine for the 19th time in, you know, however many years that they're talking about doing a Superman movie, they're talking about doing a Justice League movie, let's do a fan cast for this, Graham yada, yada, Cracker yada. Graham Cracker Comics? Yeah. What the hell is that? It's a comic book chain in Chicago. Really? Yeah, 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 Graham Holy Cracker Comics. Probably didn't know that, Andy. <laughs> just thought he'd let me go. You know, he mentioned something from the RGV. We all go, that makes go, sense. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, they pick in the movie theater, big deal. Uh it, I, th if I was to close my eyes, this would be the kind of film I, I would have dreamed of. And so I'm so happy we got it. And I hope it means good things for where James Gunn is taking uh, DCU when he does whatever. But I was thrilled with this movie. Obviously, there's plenty to talk about and critique and not like and yada, yada, yada. But overall, I loved it. Uh, I want to go back and see it. I won't probably because I've been and everything else. But I'll see it as soon as I can on demand. Nick? Well, I'll tell you what. When I, saw, when I heard about this, when I saw the first trailer, I was... I was probably the the first person to say this is going to be a terrible movie. It's going to be a hot mess. It's not it's not going to come together and I love Michael Keaton as Batman, but I'm like there's no way they're going to nail that and make it entertaining. And boy was I wrong. Holy crap. This movie is a ton of fun. It is a hot mess, but it is a hot mess that comes together, tells a coherent story and is fun and and has moments in it that really kind of yeah, granted, they're they're really touching on the nostalgia of growing up as an '80s kids and, and and seeing the '89 Batman and loving that movie as one of my favorites of all time. Um, but on top of that, to Greg's point, it it feels like a modern day comic book movie. It feels like a DC what what a DC comic book movie should feel like. And I think we've seen so many misses that that when you see it for the first time, you go, oh, I almost felt the sense of sadness of being like. I wish this was the first movie. It took us 10 years to get here, and now we're leaving and it all now behind. now we're leaving it all behind. Not to mention, with all due respect, I don't think Aquaman 2 is going to come home with the same, uh, hey, we really? nailed it. I, Damn. I don't, I don't think they would. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's unfortunate, because this really was sort of like, a, you know, I, I would want to celebrate this more, and I would, I would look forward to more of uh, the, this, this universe going forward from here, but unfortunately, we're going to part ways. But I just had a great time, and I'll, I'll tell you what. There's stuff in this that made me made the the hair on my arm stand up it made me feel so incredibly excited it made me feel like a kid again uh and a lot of it had the very same feeling i had when i watched when we watched um the latest spider-man movie with all the spider-man but to get it wrong no way home, I, no way home. Joel Spiderman. uh where you see these moments and go okay it's it's cheap on a level but it's also so in touch with what fans would want in that particular moment that you can't help but but grin from ear to ear. There was moments where I looked over to see if Greg was just smiling, and you were really stoic the entire time. I think probably Why? Shocked, it was shocked that in thing. disbelief. It's like when I leaned, when I looked over at you guys at one point, and you were gesturing wildly. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're trying to tell me, and I don't care. I want to watch this movie. That Mike forgot your M&Ms. Those yeah. junior mints weren't yours. Please hand them back to me. So the way to be stopped. the way they expressed all that to me was this. What well, if I say oh, okay. Tim? I lock eyes with you. I get it. I yeah. just gave you snacks, and I went like this. Just it, five minutes have gone by where me and Bless are like, did you order Junior Mints? No, we just passed and them I went down like the road. And everyone's passing the Junior Mints out, and I went like this. Well, and maybe if it? anybody came on time to the theater, we could all sit together. But you sent just Greg Miller there. 
Uh, Nick, I, I do want to say, to me, that box shape makes total sense for Thank the you, situation. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin, you were there. Contact. Uh, Kevin, yeah, I was looking. I was focusing on the movie. Thank yeah. you. You know? Andy Cortez. I am kind of with everybody else here. I, I do think that a lot of the sequences I wasn't a fan of definitely stick out. And there's some emotional beats that were supposed to hit near the end that are just kind of awkwardly acted and the writing is kind of weird. And there's still like bad DC stuff in this movie that kind of just say, oh man, they didn't really shed all of that stuff, right? But man, I had a lot of fun with it. And I, the, while watching this intro sequence that we'll get to here in a second, we're laughing up a storm, we're having a blast. And Great all, I, setter. all I kept thinking is, I don't think like Zack Snyder would ever do this. No, he wouldn't have. It, it, it would have been like ultra self serious, and it's okay to just like play with the rules, and it's okay to have fun in these movies because these are these are superheroes, and they're they, they are flawed, and they uh, we can show them in their vulnerable moments and them stumbling and being fools in in a lot of moments. I yeah, this movie is obviously when the initial reaction happens, and we Nick, you and I hear that. The people in the movie theater had a four four and a half hour standing ovation, maybe a seven hour standing ovation. And they're still standing. To yeah, this they're day. still standing. Please God, um, let them sit. Uh, you go, holy shit! Like, the, wow, they actually made a really really good one. We see James Gunn talking about it. This movie is a lot of fun, everybody. And you go, damn! Like, this is getting that endorsement, and obviously he's the head of DC. He kind of has to say that, but wow, I'm getting my hopes up. And then more reviews start coming out, and people that I trust more that I know personally go like, ooh, kind of a mess. That They're not lying. This movie is a mess in a lot of different ways, but it's still a lot of fun. It's like, it's flawed fun, I would say, and way better than I would have ever imagined it'd be. I recommend watching this if you care about superhero movies or if you care about Batman or any of the other things that they uh, talk about in this movie. I, I had a lot of fun with it, Tim. How about you? I really liked this movie i'm so surprised right there with y'all this was so much fun from beginning to end messy as hell but even in the messiness you're kind of there for the ride because they made it fun to be there and they would explain things and some of the explanations were like oh wow that's actually a kind of clever take on this and some of them were like really that's what you're doing but i feel like both were cool we can just get to the next thing and i feel like what's special about this movie in particular is it could have only happened with all of the bad decisions that came before it adding up to this moment where zod comes back and they the way they talk about man of steel i'm like wow that was 10 years ago and it's this weird celebration of the good and bad the dceu has had to offer and there's a scene early on in this movie like in the first 10 minutes like the first big action scene where the justice league mostly reunites and it's pretty damn special like hearing the music of the characters play and having them all together like it's cameo thank you Thank you. That terrified me. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's me too. Uh, this movie has a lot of the cameo stuff, and I know as we we kind of uh, mature in uh, the multiverse sagas that every single company is having in, in superheroes now, it kind of just gets to the point of like, all right, is it a good movie? Like, I don't care just about the cameos. I think this is a better example of the cameos either literally just being, a, hey, they're just there for set dressing; it doesn't matter. Or the cameos being integrated into the story in a way that I'm like, this makes this a little bit more worthwhile than just people showing up. Um, but I feel like overall it was a funny movie. The action, me and Andy always talk about the the choreography of using the skill sets. They had a blast with it. Yeah. Like, um, but I think that overall there's a lot of negatives to be said. This is an extremely ugly movie. Extremely ugly. The CG is not does not hold up in any way, shape, or form. I actually think that's okay though. The beginning scenes, you see these babies falling, they do not look like real babies. They're like don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is, it's a cartoon movie. I was going to say, right, it kind of almost makes it not as horrifying as it is if it all these children fall to their horrifying. death. And, and people laughed I mean, out of uncomfortableness. I mean, I'm, I'm laughing just because I, I'm laughing because I can't believe they're doing it. Yeah. It was funny. It was yeah. supposed to be funny. Yeah. And they made it funny. And I, and they line the babies up and get all the babies and, and the dog and all the stuff. Like, I, I feel like they leaned into the ugliness in a way that, like, a lot of other movies wouldn't have done that. And I think it worked really well for the tone and vibe of what this did. It, it achieved so much more than I possibly thought it could. Um, very surprised with it overall. And yeah, like there were certain moments, I, I, I feel like even the one you're saying you don't like, the emotional stuff at the end, hit me real hard. And I think it's real particular to my life and my situation sure. I have with my mom. But like, I thought that some of the takes on the 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 characters themselves and their 
you know, using superheroes to represent other things. I thought this movie did more than I ever, ever would have expected it to. So you can count me as sufficiently surprised. Same. I I thought that the, at best we were going to be like, and I've seen her two that were kind of cool and a cameo was fun. I'm way higher on it than that. Is this the next Dark Knight? Absolutely no. not. So many of the things being said about this movie are simply not true. There was a, a, a buttload of fan service and a lot of it kind of just shoehorned in and stuff that... The, the sort of fan service that you know the ultra film snobs just kind of they, they they do this great they, they, they turn their nose they turn their it. nose in they're yeah. like man you suckers that's all you watch movies for and uh, Fuck like you martin scorsese irishman sucked it's you know still made me smile right, in a lot right, of these the moments but you can't help but notice that a lot of these uh a, a lot of these little things that they're trying to show you just do get kind of uh, shoved in your face now this intro sequence you're talking about tim we're all laughing and like, wow, I can't believe this sequence is happening in this movie, right? And there's, there's that line of like, this could either be the worst thing ever. Sure. Or, wow, I'm suddenly coming back around. I'm like, actually, this is entertaining and fun. And But it was real close to hitting like, real wow, close. we're starting out the movie like this. What a stupid fucking decision. Are you decision. talking about the, the sequence within the coffee shop? Just the, ba oh, the, the babies, babies fall oh, okay. down. Or the coffee shop. The coffee shop yeah. to me, I was like, all right, this is wearing a little thin for me. Uh, and, there, and there are tons of moments in this movie like that, that whenever a, whenever a character in any of these DC movies says kind of a throwaway line that is supposed to be met with some sort of laughter, and you just go, what the fuck was that? Why, why, why have yeah. that line in there? It's useless. And there's definitely moments like that in this movie, but I think that whenever there's a moment that you kind of go, God dang, why are they doing this? It's immediately followed up with something fun and something entertaining. And this movie is just like pure entertainment, I'd say. It's, yeah. This is a turn your brain off and enjoy the ride because we're going to show you a lot of shit on this nostalgia trip, you know? And with the nostalgia thing, uh, I can't wait to hear Nick deep dive into the Keaton stuff. Didn't care about the Keaton stuff growing up. Like, that wasn't mine. Like, I watched it for the first time, really, in Batman in Review. But the 90s animated series, I love that. Very similar theme. There's a shot in this movie where the, the Batwing is flying, like, fucking up Kryptonian ships as the theme is blasting. And it feels like the cartoon on steroids. It's and literally, I could feel myself. And I looked down, and my Apple Watch was like, your heart rate is high. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God. It was so just overwhelming of, like, whoa my god i can't believe we're seeing this right now and i feel like there were multiple moments like that of like some of the some of the cameos worked some didn't for me but when we see a giant spider i'm like oh my, oh my god, god they're doing it I, yeah. and then we get nicholas cage's superman and i'm like wow I, just the spider would have been enough for me they actually committed to it and i did not see clooney coming i just nope. simply uh, did nope. not see that coming and i was like okay that's how you end the movie not the post credit scene of this but Go off, Nick. Yeah, no, I mean, you're you're spot on. You know, to me, getting a chance to see Keaton back in the bat suit again and done in, in a fun way that that I thought was I, I just thought it was really, really exciting how they utilize that character. So you could I I'm not gonna say it's what Tim Burton would have done if Tim Burton had access to some of this stuff because Tim Burton would never it, ever be a part of a movie like this. No, <laughs> definitely definitely not. But in my in my imagination when I was a kid, when I was nine years old watching Batman for the first time, when you had the toy with the belt came out. You know, you'd lasso it around and then inevitably get stuck. You'd have yeah. to cut it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is what I imagine that would be like. So to see Keaton get a chance to actually be this this version of the Batman, of a Justice League Batman, of a leader, a tactician, but also just a badass fighter. And they had a couple little hallmarks in there of him fighting. There was moments where he throws a kick very similar to the kick that he throws in the alley, like a spinning back kick that's like more Taekwondo style because that was what people thought fighting was, you know, because that's what it was in the 80s, right? Little moments like that. karate was all over um, the place. <laughs> I pop for that. The valley. I'm, I pop for the first moment where we see the mansion for the first time. And more than anything else, the checkered floor is the thing that I was like, yeah. God. Well, they did God. such a great job of doing the iconography of the 89 stuff, right? Where you walk in and like, like Kevin leaned over and he's like, is this the 89 like uh, Wayne Manor? Wayne Manor? And I'm like, yeah, because remember like the, where'd you buy, the, where'd this thing come from? China. How do you yeah, know? Japan. That's where I bought what? it. Yeah, you know what because I mean? It's Japanese. Why? Because exactly. I bought it in Japan. It <laughs> exactly. And it's like, they have the suits of armor and yeah. then they I'm like, they're going to show the long table. They had the long table. See, I missed the long table part. I was like, oh, I'm surprised they didn't no, show the long they, table. No, they had the long table away. and he had one place setting at the end of it. And uh, then, yeah, you went in, in through the kitchen and they had the little nook where he, you know, uh, Alfred brought him and Kim Basinger back and sat them there and stuff. This is like 
what's awesome too about this is like we all watched the trailer we are knew all this stuff gia had not seen any of the trailers or anything and she also has watched these movies she's done all the interviews so she's pretty damn informed at this she's point. burst uh yeah uh but when we see the mansion and stuff she didn't know and like she didn't put together and it the movie the way it pays it out i think they do a really good job of the slow reveal of keaton for those that might know because when it hit for her of like oh my god it's him it hit for her. And I'm like, that's cool. Like, good job. There was uh, a gasp the in the audience. Y'all. It wasn't Gia, but somebody in the audience gasped. And that's like, awesome. <laughs> like, I, I feel like that is an accomplishment at yeah. this point in time for a superhero movie to do the type of nostalgia thing, to have a character on screen for, what, five minutes or at least the presence of them before there's the reveal and having the reveal hit and not feel cheap to people like us that yeah, do yeah. know, that's pretty damn cool. I, I'm More than that. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Andy. I was going to say, I... I Actually, you go, because I think I'm, my, I'm taking the take a little bit further away. Sure. Uh, I was going to say more than that. The one thing that I will say that they absolutely nailed, and, and this is kudos to Michael Keaton, was that, you know, when a character has not played the same character, when an actor hasn't played the same character in like two decades or three decades, it's very it's very rare for them to step back in, especially when they're in their 60s now. And I think he's in his 60s, right? Or is he even in the 70s? I don't even know. Older. And still nail that character. And I'm... I can honestly say that he he that is that feels like that character evolved from that moment where Gotham City all of a sudden became very safe and no longer needed the Batman and you can see that he was like Keaton played it like kind of shiftless yeah he was in flip flops did I ever expect to see my, my, my he looked like the Bruce dude Wayne he looked like the dude seventy one uh, in flip flops no but it works and Keaton just is such a master at at, at straddling that line between like darkness and silliness. And that's what I love so much about him. So I'm, I'm actually excited to see if we're actually going to go back and talk about who is the best Batman. Because I know that was on our list at one point. Because I'm, I'm vying for this. I'm vying for Keaton. I, I wanted to shout out just how pleased I was with a lot of the, the smaller uh, humorous moments. Like for as much, for as little as I've enjoyed some of the more recent Marvel uh, offerings. Like when we talk about Quantum Mania or like Thor Ragnarok. Like the humor still hit for me a lot. Where those movies have maybe lacked in storytelling and and like dialogue overall. The, if you could still kind of make me feel good with humor, I'm going to give your movie a lot more kudos. That's why when we walked out of the tragically bad Rise of Skywalker, I was like, I still laughed at a lot of parts and I still didn't feel like shit while watching it. So overall, not a horrible experience, but still not a good movie, right? right. This movie, I I would have never expected this this movie or really any DC movie to kind of bring it with clever humor in the way that it did. There's just a lot of little lines said here and there, a lot of little moments said here and there that are, maybe it's prop physical comedy. Maybe it's just a little throwaway line that you don't in the Russian thing when like, uh, you know, Barry number two is, has the powers and immediately knocks over all the shit and all the scientists and that, look at them and there's like, and we have seen that so moment good. in so many yeah. Yeah. movies too. and so many Marvel movies that just did not, did work, not work at all. Yeah. And he got a laugh out of everyone, every Mark. single one of us. Dude, no, when he first phase shifts through the floor. Yeah. Hilarious. I laughed out loud. It's funny. <laughs> it's I, I laughed bit. at a lot of this movie, which is something I, I can't, I, I don't think I've been able to say for a lot of these DC movies, and you, you know, guys, like that's one thing they just not only have they not been nailing the storytelling and the acting and the, everything that makes a movie good, <laughs> but <laughs> the humor was always like extremely hit or miss. And this one, I would say, hit a lot more than it missed, which was very surprising to me. Which is incredibly important, right? Because you guys touched on this also. It, it deals with some pretty heavy stuff, and those scenes between Barry and his mother are intense. Like that is. It's real, right? I think, uh, shout out to Ron Livingston, who I, I did yeah. not know was going to reprise the role to die. I'm pretty sure it was Billy Crudup in the first he one. Removed, yeah, he replaced that. Uh, so, uh, but did a great job of it. I thought he brought an, a, a different vibe to it, which was good. And so you really do feel it when he's like, you understand why if you had the power to go back and change that, you would absolutely change that. Um, uh, the one thing I will say that's, that was that was impressive as well, you guys touched on it a little bit, but it was uh, the Justice League coming together, or for the most part coming together, and that not feeling like we needed to feel like it was a bigger deal than it was, was really cool to see. Because we've seen the Avengers come together so many times, and it's supposed to feel like that after the first big time they come together. It's supposed to feel like, oh, we're iterating on this. This is the team. These are the people we know and love. And them coming together in that whole sequence with Baffleck, 
um, and the and the bat cycle and all that stuff. I thought was just really it's just fun, man. Awesome. You yeah. know, it's funny though. You say we've seen the Avengers come together a million times. We really haven't. Like we've seen the Avengers form in the first movie. We see a little bit of them having a mission in Age of Ultron, and then it's we're thrust into Infinity War. We never get a moment casually of hey, there's a kind of small deal thing that they all get together. Right. That's why I think this is so special. Like it, they they did it and they they teased it and hinted a little bit in um. Shazam feared the gods with Wonder Woman coming to help mm-hmm. him in that bit. Like that happening and then this happening, it really does just make it feel like comic books where it's like, oh yeah, anyone can show up because it's a drawing on a page. This movie felt that way for, for good and bad reasons. But like that is very special. And I, I would argue we have never seen that before. And ku- I mean, and, ku- and kudos to Ben Affleck for just doing this one thing. You know what I mean? Like he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And all the bat men that came back to reprise the role because you can imagine there was a, there might have been a moment ten years ago where everyone would have like, no, I'm not, I'm not sharing the screen with these other huge yeah. actors. And they're like, yeah, this is this is what Mar- Marvel laid down uh, the path for all of this to happen, and it's super fun. I I do want to point out also that, um, like when I watch other actors in their roles. Especially on the MCU side, because I think if we can, I think if I could say the one thing that Marvel has been 100% nailing this whole time has been casting. And there are still, with all of Ezra Miller's problems and all the awful shit they've done, there, I still can't help myself but wondering, like, why couldn't you replace them? Why? You, you could have replaced them at any point because, like, you have the, not only, they've done awful shit, but also, while watching them acting, I'm never really thinking, like, you are nailing this all of the time. I want to see you play this role for the rest of my life. The way I felt with Robert Downey Jr. or Tom Holland in their roles. I, I always feel that way. Whenever I see Ezra Miller, I'm, like, I'm more happy with the performance this time around. I think there was more room to play. But there's still a lot of moments that I'm watching, like... Double the room. You're, like, you were the one, really? Like, we could have just... We could have easily replaced you at any moment, yeah, you know? I, I do think if you're not a fan of Ezra Miller as this interpretation of The Flash, you're going to have a... It, it might be a bit tougher for you to get through this movie because there's a lot of double Flash in this. And you guys talked a little bit about the the graphics and, or the, the CGI that was terrible in that. I honestly think a lot of it went toward nailing the the, the Back to the Future 2 double Martys on, on the uh, the screen together. Because uh, that the, all that stuff... I am not. A, I was not a huge fan of the Flash in the other movies. I don't love this interpretation of it. But for for whatever reason, that back and forth just sort of worked for me in this one. And I think it was because they nailed the effects so much, because they had so much fun with the phasing and the the learning. It's an origin story again for all intents and purposes. We never really got one from the Flash. Yeah. Um. So that that kind of worked with for me. Uh, the I did voice wanna... can also just be very grating in a lot of well, movies. you know, it's yeah, it's it's. Well, I thought introducing the, I, I weren't to call. Flash 2, Barry 2, right? Introducing Flash 2, Barry 2 offset the... I've never really vibed with Barry 1, Flash 1. I thought having him be there and be the more annoying kid, but also be a different kid was really interesting as a choice, right? Of like, what would it look like if Barry Allen grew up with his mom? Right? And I'm and shocked. Go through all this trauma. And I'm shocked I kind of enjoyed that more than I didn't. Because <laughs> yeah. like when, obviously, when you know started, that... I was in a similar thing. Like, oh, this yeah. is going to get annoying. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what. Did you guys catch? Uh, maybe I'm, I might be making this up, but I could have swore there was a moment where Barry 2, when you see him out the window, he does a thing with his, the jacket. That, that young Marty McFly, Marty McFly Jr. did in Back to the Future 2. And oh, I'm like, funny. We're, we're doing a lot of parallels between this movie <laughs> and, right and Back about to the Future that, yeah. 2. And I am all for it. You're talking about Eric Stoltz, dude. <laughs> Which was, I, are you shocked we didn't see one so shocked oh, if you don't, Eric Stoltz if you don't know ladies and gentlemen of course they filmed so much of Back to the Future with Eric Stoltz before they're like it's just not working and they, they killed him they fired him replaced him with uh, Michael J. Fox the rest is history but like when back to the, there's that footage exists and is on behind the scenes and yeah. I thought for sure when we were in the college apartment or whatever it was going to be what are you talking about pop then, the blu-ray oh, yeah. in and then it you is see and, a deep fake or something like that, something like that. Like, no, have, see, see the footage see, oh, the, see the, the real footage you're the right, real footage right. exists. I thought for sure we were going to get it to blow the audience's minds who don't know that that's a real thing. Maybe they couldn't work it out with Probably. Universal or whatever it is. But but either way, that was – I loved all that stuff. I love the little nuances of it too where he's like, you mean Michael J. Fox, right? He goes, no, no, no uh, Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz, no way. Eric Stoltz. Michael Stoltz. J. Fox from Footloose? Yeah, from Footloose? That's <laughs> great. No, but then somebody, it from Top Gun? From <laughs> I've broken time. I've broken time. But I, I love that he goes, Eric Stoltz, so stoic. And you're like, that's exactly, that's like why they fired that's why him. They, they were like, this it's is great. He's not funny. He's not entertaining. Him. All that little thing, all those There's little things. Such were good just, aware writing. Just 
slamming yeah. 80s Nick with all the nostalgia. Just loving every moment of that. I can't wait to get into all of this in the plot. But before we do that, here is a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Amazon and Summer Game Fest. We are in an absolutely stacked year of video game releases, and you can find all of them on Amazon.com slash Summer Game Fest. I hope that you found a spare few hundred hours to play all the amazing games that have come out this year already. Gamers have been eating good this year, but this is the only place you want to be amazon.com slash summer game fest because guess what this summer there's gonna be even more exciting announcements coming through of so many more video games that are about to be on all of your favorite consoles like final fantasy 16 armored core 6 diablo 4 street fighter 6 mortal kombat 1 exo primal assassin's creed mirage <gasps> the list goes on and on you can go to amazon.com slash summer game fest all summer long to discover the top new and upcoming games as soon as they go up for pre-order or you can go check out the website now for everything you might have missed so far this year again that's amazon.com slash summer game fest for all of your video game needs today's episode is sponsored by paypal honey the easy way to save when shopping on your iphone or computer but did you know it only takes a few seconds to get it that means if you go to add it on your laptop or iphone right now you could be done before the ad read is even over you know how good it feels to check something off of your to-do list so hey Let's get to check-in. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. So imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite websites out there, and when you check out, the Honey button appears, and all that you have to do is click Apply Coupon. Kind of funny, he's been using Honey for years. It's literally saved us thousands of dollars on tech, food, costumes, ton of stuff. Uh, Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It works on your iPhone, too. You just activate it on Safari, on your phone, and you get to save on the go getting honey seriously only takes a few seconds and by getting it you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny that's joinhoney.com slash kind of funny we all love gobbling up content and we have an understanding of what subscriptions we use or do we do you know how much your subscriptions really cost most americans think they spend around 80 dollars a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to $200. That's right, you could be wasting hundreds of dollars each and every month on subscriptions you might not even know about. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and it helps lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money has saved some of us here at Kind of Funny a ton of money, and it can help you too. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finance in one place, and it automatically can help categorize your expenses. So you can easily track your budget in real time, stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. That's rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. Rocket money, kind of funny. <laughs> Andy. Plot, 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 plot. Plot, 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 plot. It's so hard to sing and play at the same time. Can you do the dan, 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 but say plot for me? Plot, 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 That's why we're the best. You and me, the music brothers, they call us. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Central City. We are back in the DCEU, and it feels so good. I was eating another Coke. If you don't mind. Love uh, the intro of this. Love the, the studio stuff. The DC getting like the DC logo through time. Yeah, the Warner the Brothers logo Warner through, Brothers time. through time. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Very cool stuff. Very, very nice. Very, And again, really setting the stage in the same way. I think we're going to talk about the uh, hospital scene being maybe a bit jarring when we're watching. We're like getting the vibe of this movie, but then it establishing the vibe. I'm excited to go back and watch it start to finish knowing the vibe rather than trying to get my my feet uh, wetter uh, on the ground. Yeah, uh, you, you, walk, you walk into this, you're like, uh, guarded, right? <laughs> like, yeah, what am I about, are they about to hurt me? What am I about to get? What am I? What's about to go on here? Uh, instead, though, we start yeah in Central City with uh, Barry Allen walking into a coffee shop. Right, it's not jitters, everybody from the CW. Don't worry. How dare you? Uh, how dare you? I wish it were. Uh, they, they're, I'm glad. You know what? Uh, we'll get to it all. Well, I can toss it in now because I don't know when toss you want it. In, to. One of the things again, why I'm like, oh, this is the DC I wanted. I loved all the stuff in the background, stuff in the fridge that was there. If you saw, great. If you didn't, it, it, we didn't hang on it. We didn't do a thing about it. DCs in their other movies have done this before. Of 
making a big deal out of something stupid that you don't care about. I loved opening Barry's fridge and seeing a big, a big belly cup in there, but them not making a big deal about it. I loved when he's talking to Bruce outside. In the one of the shops in the background is Grayson's, right? And Wiz Comics. And it's like, awesome. You're fucking doing a whole bunch of cool shit here, but you're not like... I you're want world the, building. I want the world to feel lived in. You are I feel fans. so many you times. Are, yeah. Like, you are showing that you care about these franchises deeply, you know? Anyways, Barry has a cool new watch that tells him what his caloric intake is at for him to use his Flash powers. Again, to your point, we've never gotten an origin movie about the Flash or really any explanation from the DCE about his powers. It's cool to see them keep this. He needs to eat. He needs to do a bunch of stuff. And I think like it, it. does a, a good job, you know, for uh, a character that we've previously seen break time. Like, it's, you know, the yeah. type of power set that is so advanced that it's at some points you're like, okay, what can't you do if you can slow down time that much to yeah. be able to whiz around? Giving that level of like, oh, there is a meter. There's a power bar here, and there's a uh, cause and effect of when you're low, you need to eat, or else you're going to be in trouble. I thought that was a really good call to like not have him be Superman level. Shows oh, shows up at the coffee shop. Oh, yeah. What they've done for it's Superman at the beginning. Uh, shows up. Uh, you know, I'm just saying Superman has week. It doesn't matter. Uh, shows up. Uh, uh, Sarah's not working because she's got a boyfriend or something. So Barry gets a guy who doesn't know a sandwich and takes a long time to make it. And Barry's very hungry, and everything's falling and apart. This sucks. Real yeah, bad. I, hate, I just hate real the sandwich. bad sandwich guy sucks. All like all of Barry's reactions to the sandwich guy sucks. Like it's it's not. I immediately think of just Paul Rudd at Baskin Robbins yeah. or yeah. whatever. Like it's just but not. Here's, the same. This is you're my trying same, to do that and you're not. This yeah. is my same point though. I agree that I felt the whole thing was awkward. I'm interested to watch it again now that I. Oh, this is how this movie is and what this movie is and who this Barry is. Question for you guys: He starts in this little cafe thing. Mm -hmm. There's the food conversation, whatever. Then he runs off and uh, he gets uh, a call from the one and only Alfred. That's right. Jeremy Irons is back. Yeah, and there's trouble in Gotham at the hospital. As that's all happening, there's the big fights and stuff. When the Flash comes back at the end, the guy's like just turning to give him his food. How does that make any sense at all? Well, because he took twenty minutes. He took, to make the he sandwich. took twenty minutes to make the sandwich. That was the whole he was point. like in the middle of a conversation. With the guy, well, the guy's not having a conversation. He's just monologuing. He's just talking. He's just talking. Yeah. Nobody. He's just, he's just blabbering. He's on. an asshole. Didn't work for me. I did not like the cafe stuff at all. Anyway, I go back to yeah. It, I totally get it. <laughs> now that uh, Jeremy Irons calls trouble at the Gotham Hospital, we need your help. Barry's like, I'm really important and hungry, but I can't. You got to come do it. You got to do it right now. Uh, <clears throat> he goes in the bathroom, changes into a super suit, and then he's out to the thing. Don't like the suit at all. I, it grew on me. First introduction of I didn't like it. And again, like I'm not, I like Grant Gustin's, you know, CW suit more. But like, I, it grew on me. By the end, I was in. Uh, it gets down to do it. The Flash logo, the movie starts to pop up, and then it gets Enjoyed stopped by that. a woman screaming off the side. It's a girl. She's really excited cool. to see the Flash. She's the coolest. Yeah. yeah. This girl screaming was so funny. I, I feel like it's that type of thing you either got it or you don't. Yep. With like, oh, there's some random kids on the side, and they scream because they're fans of the Flash. Could be so, ugh. or it could be this, which was like her performance of just. Ah! Like, yeah, actually funny. Yeah, yeah, it was very funny. Similar to, hey, Spider Man, do a flip. Like, yeah, there's yeah, a lot of ways you could cast the wrong person and it not land at all, and it totally landed. Speaking here. of not landing, he eventually asked to have the candy bar. They throw it, but Jeremy Irons talks to him some more. Alfred, he, it hits him in the head. It's a funny little scene, and then he finally goes back down. The Flash logo, he's off to the races. I'll drop a whole bunch of dialogue in here, of course. Well, why aren't you? Hey, I'm, I'm just the Justice League's janitor. This is underneath eventually. Uh, but why, you know, why not call Wonder Woman? She's unavailable. Aquaman's doing something. Superman's saving the world. They show him stopping a volcano on TV or whatever. Barry's like typical. Uh, but he Aquaman's had red, red lobster. He had a little promotional thing, a little tie-in. No, he'd be protesting, wouldn't he? Oh, fuck, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, though, this yeah. particular group of shrimp, not friendly with it. Warring faction shrimp. We run over to Gotham Hospital, right, where we find all this happening. He bitches, of course, that Batman's he's cleaning up bat messes. Batman calls in eventually. He's chasing Falcone's son, who has run off with a you know biological agent that could kill the entire world. Cool stuff, man. It's so much in this, again, can only happen when we've had 10 years of this and like even more with just the lore of it all. But like... To have him have to run from Central City to Gotham City, that making sense, Batman. Because they seem far away, don't they? Central City and Gotham City. Mm -mm, I don't know. It did seem far away. I mean, he ran. Because he him. ran for a while. For a while. It was a big yeah, deal. It's a big deal. And uh, we should talk about Bruce, that, right? he, Bruce just driving over every so often. Them taking a cab there. Yeah. How much was this fucking cab? Yeah, there was Bruce a longer to get in the helicopter than this for the helicopter yeah. to take off and go across the harbor. There was a weird sort of... I couldn't tell if they were trying to go stylistic with it in the way that, like, imagine a post-credit sequence when Marvel does their, like, cool, like, mm -hmm. art-style stuff. When he's running through the cities, the CGI started to look so bad that I was like, 
oh, but this is the style they're going for, maybe? Because, <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's obviously him speeding through all these different like, I, countries and counties and, and uh, you know. I think it was budgetary. Yeah. I don't think, I, I think a lot of the CGI, because there's moments where he enters the time bubble um, where it is. All the Coliseum. Well, it, the Coliseum stuff, stuff is Spider-Man yeah. one level bad. Every person is CG in there. Yeah, and super it just, it lo- looks really But it hits the point, it doesn't bother me. No. Like, that's just what it looks like. Yeah. All right. But I, I wish I wish it was like I wish everybody was think back to Guardians of the Galaxy 2 when Kurt Russell is talking about how here's how ego. I mm-hmm. impregnate these planets yeah, or whatever yeah, and badass. everybody's like all white yeah, like, yeah, 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 like yeah. I wish everybody in this time zone had like a color shade to them so it made sense that their models looked weird yeah. and uncanny valley-ish Are you yeah. Central or Pacific time zone? Oh, I'm Coliseum time zone. Yeah. <laughs> um, um I, I did want to say though that uh, all of the Batman stuff with the motorcycle, he pulls off some awesome shit in this sequence that, like, his had me giddy, man. Giddy. It was awesome. It's, it's, it's Also, he's rocking the nice uh, navy and blue love suit. That. Yeah. I loved that. Having said that, did not love the suit. Not, mostly because I just, I have, you know, it's it's very hit or miss for me seeing Batman live action during the daytime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't love it. I really wish that they found a lot more reasons to not have that happen. But because this was so fun and so playful, it worked for me. But I did not like the actual design of the chess piece in this. It was like a like protective thing, right? Well, it looked like it, it looked like it clipped on with some of those little like plastic clips. And I think a lot of it was overly designed to make Ben Affleck look a lot bigger than he was because you could tell by his neck that he was not. He didn't. Oh, really he's work out Bruce with Wayne. Way. After yeah, you yeah, you, totally I mean, you can, yeah, you can normal. see it all. And again, no no slight to Ben Affleck. To like, me, if I had 15 minutes in a movie, I'm not, I'm not gonna train for eight months to do, do that it. thing where he's beaten on the tire again yeah, with him. I, I you don't need to be doing that. Yeah, I didn't love the suit either. But to me, this felt like when you buy the. The motorcycle Batman action figure, yes. and it, and which it comes is cool. like, yeah, which is very cool. Like, it, it or the like Tundra version looks yeah. different, yeah. you know. And, and we've seen that before in this Ben Affleck race in the desert ah! stuff. Ah! Uh oh, worlds are colliding, ladies and gentlemen. Colliding. Welcome to the podcast within a podcast, the best bat suit, of course. When we did Batman in review, we ranked all the bat suits we saw. Number one was Phantasm. Number two was Batman Returns. Number three was Batman Begins with the velour cape. Number four was Batman Forever Normal. Number five was the '89 Batman. Number six was Batman and Robin. Number seven was Sonar Suit from Batman Forever. Number eight was the '66 Batman suit, and then number nine was Batman and Robin on Ice. Where do we want to rank Ben Affleck's blue and gray duds? Really put the Batman Begin suit that high, huh? We did with the velour cape. Interesting. The velour cape. Where was the Dark Knight suit? Velour cape. I mean, this one, it was fine. I think we just included it there with the velour cape, yeah. I, yeah, I wasn't too bothered. By I think it's it. outrageous still that we put Batman 89 so low, so I'd put it I, below that. I, okay. That well, he's got the below stupid that. neck. Two, he's three, stupid four, neck. five. Stupid. That would be number six, and below it would be Batman and Robin. Yeah, I'm cool with that. All right. right. Thank you very much. Robin Everybody has to happy to do the show with you. The Dark Knight suit is number one. Pretty sure we're going to I don't think we can. I don't know. <laughs> no, the, I'll tell you why I didn't love a lot. Like, looking back, why I didn't love a lot of the Nolan suits. A little tiny mouth. Oh, that's yeah. right. A little yeah. tiny yeah. mouth. Yeah. Hole. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you there you go. Talking through a tunnel. Now <laughs> the, the multiverse of in review is colliding within itself. You have number six is the flash suit on our best bat suit list, ladies where, and gentlemen. Where did we put Robert Pattinson's? Uh, that wasn't in the Batman in review section, remember? We put out somewhere else or did oh. something else or we didn't do the series. Or I don't fucking dope. know. I don't know we why. Should've, probably we should have. We should have. <laughs> 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 you wanna, we'll wait for Batman 2 to figure that Still one out. All right. 2027. Put yeah. patents well, into the top. Well, ben, Batman 2 is Ben dope. will do it. <laughs> ben, Rimothy, and Paula Paula will rank it then when we get there. Uh, anyways, back to the movie, which we really haven't even begun. Uh, like I said, they get there. The hospital's falling down. Alfred does some fun stuff saying, hey, you know what? Like I'm, I'm doing some calculations, and of course I'm never wrong, as you know. And and it ter- it turns out that oh. I'm sorry, it's worlds are again. colliding. It's Welcome to again. a podcast within a podcast, Ragu Elf Elf, <laughs> where we rank all the Alfreds of the Batman Cinematic Universe on in review. At number one, you have Batman Begins, Alfred. At number two, Phantasm. Number three, Batman Forever, Alfred. Uh, number four, eighty nine, Michael Goff. <laughs> number. Greg, can you, Greg, can you do the world's Batman colliding returns. thing again? Ah, ah, 
<laughs> I'm sorry, worlds are colliding. <laughs> There's going to be more, so keep on. Number. All right. Uh, number five, Batman Returns. Number uh, six was 66, Alfred. And number seven was Batman and Robin, Alfred. Where do we want to put Jeremy Irons? I mean, very I limited. I love Jeremy I mean, Irons. I mean, if he's not he's a at all, though. just him He's not because he was in DCEU exactly. where with the worlds didn't collide, but Yo. now the worlds have collided. Oh. You see oh. what's happening? Oh, I do see I'm yeah, so yeah. confused, but I like Jeremy I'll Irons. put it him high. Okay. I'm putting. I love Jeremy Irons love as him. as Alfred. Obviously, a Batman take, Begins is currently the number one Alfred. Phantasm is number two. I'd put Jeremy Irons. It's, it's, not, it's Michael it's Kane versus Jeremy Irons. If you put, two, right if you put Jeremy Irons, you puff me. Okay, there you go. I'll be very disappointed. The Flash Jeremy Irons enters Ragu <laughs> Alf Alf oh. at number two, oh, ladies goodness. and gentlemen. Uh, my calculations <laughs> are never wrong. The, the hospital's about to co collapse. Flash is like, no, it's not. I love these type of cameos, though. The Jeremy Irons later we get. Oh, you mean uh, ones that make sense and are really cool for the story? Aquaman's dad. like things. Oh, like my that. God. So just, cool. I just love where it's like, oh, it makes sense for the story. But then it also just feels like these are real characters that have been living here. And we've seen Exactly. Them, we it makes them. it seem like the DC universe. Right? Like, yes. it's a universe, right? And again, back to my point from the beginning of like, man, I wish this. In, so, so many people have said this or whatever. But I think you might have even said like, uh, it's, I wish we'd gotten here sooner. So, I think we could have started the DC universe here. Nobody needs Batman's backstory. We need the Flash's backstory because it's neat or whatever, and all the people don't know it, yada, yada, yada. Wonder Woman, we could have just jumped in. We didn't need all this bullshit to get here. Yeah. I digress. Uh, before we even got the, it's going to collapse. No, it's not. We got to go up in the hospital and see just all the the, the nurse locked in the room with a room full of babies. Baby and it, in the first act. And it was like, that. this is when I was like, that is an over-the-top decision, but I'm like, it's also very comic booky, and it's like, are they going to land up. this or fuck it up and ruin the start of the movie? And they land it because, of course, the building does collapse. Everything shifts to the side. The babies roll. The glass breaks. They all tumble out. Flash sees it all in slow motion. Before that, though, we do get a wonderful moment to, to your earlier point where it's like the Flash is not all powerful. You start seeing him. It, everything is frozen, and then it starts to slowly speed up as his energy level hits nothing, and he runs for the first baby. And then pushes it aside. Not before that, we're right there. This is like oh, the next scene apologies. that I would have gotten to. My the baby's already out the window. Well, you, you go for it. Baby's out with the bathwater. No, 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 no. <laughs> now we're in something that Nick recaps the plot <laughs> for. Fair <laughs> enough. It was great. Uh, Real good. Thank I you. just I love this moment where he goes. Yeah. To, he pushes the. It baby looks like aside. he's coming for the baby and yeah, just karate <laughs> and chops and in and eats all the food. And I think that is what kind of th that makes me turn the corner because as soon as the babies are falling out of this building. And we're laughing like, what the fuck is this movie doing right now? This is dumb as hell. And then he reaches past to get the food to fuel up. And then it, it clicks right there. Yep. In that moment, you go, oh, man, these people know what they're, they're doing. doing. Yeah. They're doing it. They're this is funny. This is comedy, you know? And we've seen this type of scene a lot before. X-Men. X-Men, uh, the second X-Men. We, we had another one in that, right? All of the... Like Silver Killing in yeah, First Silver Class Silver and Days of Future Past. Yeah, both great. This, I was like, oh, here we go, right? It's the, it's the slow motion. We're trying to better the uh, uh, the sequence in uh, First Class where it, lightning, in a, not lightning in a bottle. What's the name of that song? If I could put time, 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 time in a bottle. Time, time in a bottle. bottle. Uh, which is phenomenal. This just Oh, I thought you were trying to say they were trying to catch lightning in a bottle. No, there's the, <laughs> the time in a, the, 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 the best sequence is the one where yeah. in, the, in the kitchen where he's like pushing all this stuff. That was fantastic. The X-Men Mansion sequence not as great. This one, I was like, no, let's not try to best those. And they just did something completely different. Mm -hmm. And it was fun. Great. Ladies and totally. gentlemen, I have sad news to report to you. I apologize. It turned out that I had moved off of my notes app. By the time we did Batman in the Batman in review, so I do have it. So we can fix this real quick and get everything set up, all right? Do I have to run backward for it? Do you want me to run around the set and then go back in time so we can fix this? Fuck yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God! Worlds are colliding! It's a podcast within a podcast! Greg, talking, it's not on the notes app. It's on the list. It's talking best bet. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the tomatoes? <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was really good. 10 out of 10. So, oh man, my... <laughs> was really out of we really fucked it up oh, <laughs> thank man. god thank god you corrected me i would have made quite the fool out of myself by ranking <laughs> off the wrong list sadly my dad is uh george clooney now so. <laughs> the best bat suits there's actually 13 
13 on the list. Huh. Number one, the Batman's bat suit in Batman. Number two, Dark Knight slash Dark Knight Returns. This makes sense. Uh, number three, Phantasm. Number four, Batman Returns. Number five, Batman Begins with the Voyeur Cape. Number six, Batman Forever Normal. Number uh, seven, 89, Batman. Number eight, Lego Batman. Number nine, Batman and Robin. Number 10, Sonar Suit Batman Forever. Number 11, 66, Bat Suit. Number 12, Young Bruce the Joker. <laughs> God, we're stupid. Uh, number 13, <laughs> Batman and Robin on Ice. I assume we're still fine then putting it in at right below 89. That would put it above Lego Batman. Sure. Cool. Okay. I'm fine with it. I don't agree, but I'm okay. Uh, well, then with argue it. I mean, well, it's all we do all day. Lego <laughs> Batman's better. I'll put it below Lego Batman. Then. What do you think? I'll Andy? back you. Well, okay, you're flip flopping. I think Lego Batman's better. All right, then it's actually going in. Uh, the Flash Bat suit goes in at number nine on the overall list. Number nine, no. the, uh, below Lego Batman and above Batman and Robin. Luckily, uh, I feel like we should do rank the Alpha Alf in a second, but that doesn't change anything because I don't think. Oh no, it does. Sorry, change but I might have been a little confused. Which bat suit are we ranking in this? The gray and blue one, isn't okay. that right? Which one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought we were gonna rank the. Are we gonna rank the other one? Yeah, of course we are. He's not in the fucking movie yet. We're gonna rank the Flash bat suit. Oh, what? No, it's not in the movie yet. Thank you, thank you, Cole. I don't know why he's running backwards. But <laughs> Great job, Greg. <laughs> okay, and then so the Flash Alfred doesn't change much because it was number one Dark Knight Alfred, number two Dark Knight Returns Alfred, then Batman Begins Alfred. Oh, shit. Alfred. I mean, there's a lot of fucking Michael Caine right there. But we're putting him below everybody, right? Jeremy Irons? Okay. There's nothing Caine. wrong with a lot of Michael Caine. Got it. All right, cool. Uh, we've kind of beaten the horse to the death here, but yeah, he punched through the thing, gets all the babies, but he doesn't touch the babies, so he moves them around, but there's one baby that he has to put in a microwave. You're like, what's that all about? He'll explain it later that if he touches you, you just fucking vomit forever, right? Uh, baby's going to puke his own guts out. Nudges a bunch of things the way it should be, gets the thing, catches everybody, rolls them away. That's great. On top of that, though, the mic he put the baby in the microwave, and the microwave went through fire. fire. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 It was just like these babies. Like, it, and you start to really, it's so like uncomfortable comfortable to watch but then you realize this is literally like not even a second so it's right. like that baby it felt like the baby was in but the they still gave the baby a goofy smile like yeah. it was really enjoying it i appreciated <laughs> that right yeah, they, they look like cabbage patch dolls it was very uncanny valley with the babies yes but and then he saves the nurse lands time speeds back up and the nurse she's like you've been safe he screams <laughs> about how ridiculous that was or whatever amazing and, and the service dog was falling too but they saved the first service dog. A, a, a great line from barry on right here being like uh, if you need to seek uh, mental counseling or anything like that, please seek your blah, blah, blah. Don't ask the Justice League. We're not really We're not good, good at, at it yet. Me. We're not good at that <laughs> yet. We're not good at that. Uh, and so then, you know, uh, Jeremy Irons, of course, Alfred is like, I'm really impressed with you, Mr. Allen. That was a great job or whatever. Uh, he runs over then to help Bruce, of course, who's still chasing Falcone, who's got the, the neurotoxin or whatever. Uh, Batman falls over the side. Or Falcone. Fal falls over the side he's got it hanging above the water if one of those falls everybody will be dead in, in gotham or whatever uh and then oh, it's fine i got it wonder woman's there to lasso and pull them all up congratulations save the day uh flash was there holding his hand too or whatever they're both lassoed uh she, you know she says whatever and bruce is like i could never thank you it'd be too big for my ego but it has a fun thing that like Joss Whedon tried really hard to do in Justice League when Aquaman was sitting on it, but it didn't work as well as it works here because it's really fun and genuine here, I thought. They, uh, they run around together? I mean, you know, I, I got vibes, yeah. but it also seemed like they hadn't seen each other in a while. I got the vibes of, like, what's up? But, like, yeah, nobody no, I at got... the office knows we're dating, but yeah. we've been dating. Yeah, I did I like feel that, that way. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love it. Yeah, okay. Good stuff. The Show, last stuff showing her the old bat wing. Could have been funnier. Could have been, been less funnier. I think overall, I'm happy it was Andy. there. Yeah, exactly. What's up, Nick? Andy, what's the bat wing in this context? The bat wing. The bat wing. You, you and your wing. friends all did the bat wing. Your you kids. Grab your balls and you stretch. Balls. Them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I love it. I love that Kevin yeah. had to spell it out. Grab yeah. your, no, grab this your is like yesterday when I said flicking the bean, and this kid in chat honestly didn't know. So grab that your balls. Can you stretch it out? I just didn't. Th in my brain, <laughs> I wouldn't naturally think that that's what Bruce Wayne would. That's like his Barry Allen thing. is, of course, late Check for work, out. so he <laughs> runs back Sorry. to Central City where he checks in and all the other, the new, the two people who see, oh, these are his friends. They're not his friends. They're really mean coworkers are making fun of him. And then the boss is all mad at him for being late. What excuse are you going to give me this time, Alan? Your dog ate the thing and the thing and the dog and the thing and the dog. And he's like, oh, man, that's not even make sense. He's like, you're in trouble as always. You're late. Whatever. 
Uh, we go through the workday. Then Barry's working on a glove. He's working on some evidence or whatever. Uh, but he comes out. His friends come, fake friends, come to the window, knock on the glass, and like, yeah, come outside. And he comes outside, and they're giving a presentation. Like, yo, we have the glove. Everything's done. We have. And he's like, I'm still working on that. And then they make fun of him, and they just keep bagging on. They are yeah atrocious. Uh, they're not his friends. Horrible. Man. I hate this. Everything about them, I just dislike. When they come back in a different timeline, they're fucking hilarious. And I did not see that coming at all. Because they're the ones in the the, in the apartment. The yeah, yeah, which I just put together when you said Me that. Me too. Because I did, did not, not know that. that. I did not put did that not together at the time. That girl was very funny. She was funny, yeah. I, I was um, however, though, it, watching the, the, the boss do the big talk is Iris... Iris West. So Iris West comes over at the end and is like, Barry, Barry Allen. And she's like, and he's like, yeah, oh, Iris, hey, I haven't seen you in forever. And she's like, I thought you saw me real recently or whatever, making, ladies and gentlemen, it official. Special, Greg. The Snyder Cut is, in fact, the canonical Justice League because, of course, that's the only place we saw Barry save Iris West in that car accident when I think they played Hallelujah or whatever they're playing. I don't fucking remember. They played mm, something. Oh, hallelujah. He blew up his shoes. Remember? It was a big deal. Yeah. Uh, he saved her there, and then he just plays it off, and they're like, okay, cool. I won't talk to you anymore about it. Kind of clunky and weird with this whole, like, oh, we've seen each other. We haven't seen each other. And I, and I know that they're referencing that, but if you don't know that, this just feels awkward where it's like, oh, yeah, we were friends in college. It's like, how far out from college are you now? There's, I just feel like there's just a lot of questions more than answers here but i do think that this movie from around this point on does a good job of catching people up to the flashes situation with his parents and what's going on with the court system and like why his dad's in uh, prison and all that and i'm like huh, this is, we got bits and pieces through the last what 10 movies or whatever but you did a pretty good job of catching everyone up if they haven't seen all these other things and that's of course what she's referencing she's a reporter she'll be covering the case tomorrow of there's an appeal hearing for barry's dad who of course is in jail for murdering his mother which he and barry claim is not the case barry is sad about this and goes home uh once he's at home in his apartment uh he gets a phone call from his dad at the you know central city corrections facility or was it black gate i forget where it was it was one of the no, iron heights iron, iron heights, heights iron heights, heights. Yeah. uh he accepts to collect charges, talks to his dad. They're talking about the appeal process. Uh, there's a package from Bruce Wayne uh, that Barry's looking at while talking to his dad. And it's sorry, Barry, and you play it. And it's security footage that Bruce cleaned up that would not be in It would be totally inadmissible since just some random was touching. But they look at it, and he never looks up. He never looks up on the, 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 hot, the grocery store feed. Yes, Nick? Was it glitched because Barry went back and glitched it? No. Okay. It was glitched just because it was bad thing and that was the mcguffin i thought it was like every time like the electricity was the electricity from his shit like messed up the cameras no interesting no. okay at least not myri i mean you know Fair. we can call up andy and see not this andy the talented andy who makes movies and see what he's oh muchetti oh, yes, muchetti um and so it, he's like just let it go barry similar to the conversation we saw last time they talked even though dad's changed quite a bit uh and so barry pew, Shoots out, and where does he run? He runs back to their childhood home to stand on the street like a big old creeper looking at it and reminiscing while talking to his dad. But then we get a flashback of, you know, uh, them being at the house and young Barry coming out and then the thing going and mom's in there dancing, singing. You remember the song she would play and she would wear my sweats and she would do this and she would make a sauce and it would smell like basil. And so Barry gets to kind of relive everything and all the trauma. And is I think we even get this is where we get everything. So stabbing, putting yeah, all here, the whole thing. Yeah, you know, you, you know, uh, he's up in his room playing after his dad went to get the tomato sauce, that the blue can, the green can. You'll find out can uh, when he very comes good, back and he finds very that. good young double for yep. yeah, oh yeah, totally. Uh, but you know, finds the mom uh, stab. Barry called nine one one. Barry runs out of the house like a little doofus. Could have saved your mom. Dial. Those are those are those are what we call the golden minutes right there. You get on the phone right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Where was he running? Neighbor's house, probably. You know, kids are they're stupid. I, I want to give a shout out to the mom here too. That also often in a lot of these comic book movies, like all the parents are always like this these throwaway characters, and the actors never. She kills quite it. Nail she crushes. It. I think she was great. I Me think too. I think they did a great job with this character specifically. Like a very real. loving mother, loving you, mother, you, but that feeling that real and feeling like you know she has. It's not just in this no disrespect, but like uh, Martha Kent or uh, or uh, what's the, what's the dad's name? Bob Kent, Jonathan Kent. Where they just feel sort of like one dimensional the entire time. Okay, first off, you know, there. I'll, I'll, I, 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 I do not enjoy cool. the Kevin Costner performance of Jonathan Kent. Oh, okay, so but you if you're going to come me. in here and insult Diane Lane like that, unfaithful Diane Lane, we're going to have some fucking words. Okay. Have some words. I, Remember I'll, when she drops the coffee pot? You know what? Remember when she says the cape? You know, I'm, I'm a friend of your sons. I thought so. Yeah. The cape? That's a fucking portrayal right there. The, that, you know what? I'd like to take that back if I could, but there's just no mechanism that'll allow me to run back in time and do it. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> what a great audio podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's a great, more of a visual gag, I would say. Uh, 
you know, Barry's mom in this just as good as as Martha Kent and Jonathan Kent. Just nailed it. Oh, I hate Jonathan Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I um, will say they tried to. They did the very diet. We have I love you three thousand at home sort of version of it. Oh, I love, love you, you. Love you. I love, love you. you. Love you. I loved you first. I love you more. It'll never be. I love you three thousand. No, never will. Yeah. Uh, Barry gets super sad because of this and runs and runs and runs until his little legs get so fast they take him into the time bubble, the Coliseum, where he rewinds time a little bit and is like, wait a second. And he pops his head out and he looks around. He's like, I just rewound town to the babies. Pretty cool, man. I like that this was, there's a couple little distinctions that they, they do in this movie versus Spider-Verse or Multiverse of Madness or any of the other things that we're seeing recently with multiverse stuff where it wasn't him trying to do this. And then it happening. He accidentally ran too fast and this happened. Yeah. I, and I like how early it happened in the movie. And I, I feel like. <laughs> That's great. I just feel like that was like a, an interesting way to jump into this. And later, the way that they handle the, the pasta and like the. Like the explanation. All, I was yeah. like, oh, cool. I like this explanation. It's very similar to ones we've had, but kind of explains this world's or this universe is uh, a little bit better. So I, I appreciate that. 100%. Uh, Barry doesn't change anything, though. Gets out of that. He's like, well, I just ran back in time. I, I know Kung Fu. So he contacts the one and only Bruce Wayne, who has a conversation conversation with him outside uh, of his apartment about this. This is the Graysons in the background in a nice car and, and Bruce being like, these scars are, who, are what made us who we are. Like, you can't go in. You can't tinker that. You can't yep. change that. That's dumb. Don't be an idiot. To which Barry's like, oh man, like we should go get dinner. And Bruce is like, you're in a very vulnerable state and have the ability to ruin everything. I got to go. So yeah. you're on your own. Kid. You're clearly struggling with this and you're 90% in on this. And I have not talked you out of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, bouncing. yeah, yeah exactly. I don't want yeah, to bounce. Yeah, I, I've not at all really driven this point home. Also, I'm just get in case here. nobody knows. Please buy a Mercedes. Please buy a Mercedes. <laughs> okay. Everyone. Uh, Bruce leaves and, and Iris is waiting in the shadows. And she comes over and she's like, you got friends with cool cars. It's an Uber XL or, or uh, Uber, whatever, the fancy executive. What's well, up like with that, that flash car? Iris is a movie. journalist in this, correct? Yes. A journalist who presumably would know exactly who Bruce Wayne is. Mm-hmm. Is it odd that she's not like, why are you fucking hanging out with Bruce Wayne? Technically, the back of the head to her the entire time. At one point, I guess he, ca- he turns to get the car, but... Okay. I'm with you. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's weird that she wasn't like, was that Bruce Wayne? Why do you know Bruce Wayne? The only, I mean, like, th- there is so much headcanon shit to do and comic books. We're talking about comic books. Sure. May, it could be one of those if we really want to get in the weeds and wrestle with uh, headcanon. Like, okay, what billionaire, I guess I know, I'm, I'm arguing myself. But, like, okay, so, like, I don't think of Wayne Tech as Apple. I don't think Bruce Wayne comes out and gives, like, Steve Jobs speeches. No. So it's like, then I'm just talking about he's some billionaire. Like, how many billionaires are there in New York that have office Wayne, Wayne Tech would be like shit. Dell or, you know. Okay, so there you go. Like, what if this, would you know the CEO or like of Dell? Boston Dynamics. And I, this isn't exactly apples to apples. I know. It's rough, though. Because like, in this, in this here's world. A better, here's a better this one. World, he's here's like a JFK better Jr. example of this. A way better example of this. Fucking Clark Kent didn't know who he was, remember? Who's that? Oh, you must be new to the Let Them Eat Cake beat. That's Bruce Wayne. Yeah, but remember, in that movie, he'd only been on Earth for one minute. <laughs> Stop me, let there is true. Ah, God it's damn true. it. I do love how Mercedes had a bunch of RGB all over it. Mm-hmm. Cool life. So cool. Uh, he invites Iris upstairs. Uh, he does super speeds and cleans up his entire place. I like this gag where he cleans up the entire house. Yeah. This is much cleaner than I thought it'd be. Yeah, I'm a pretty tidy guy. <laughs> and all the shit falls out. I was like, all right, cool. Same thing. I like the gag too. <laughs> you want a drink? Yeah. He opens it up. He's got moldy broccoli and a Chinese. So he phases through the wall and gets the beers and comes back. And, you and know, then sitting down yeah, and pops it. You know it's coming. You I know didn't. it's going to pop. That caught me off guard. I, I didn't. Have I didn't. Shake the shit out of those <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. But I was, I was so caught up in the rest of it. I wasn't thinking of like the reality of what would happen to a beer you shake at a molecular level. Um, Tim, mm-hmm. we've uh, done uh, science with Kevin. Yes. We've run it back a couple times here. We've got Ragu Bagu Alpha. Alf, alf, alf. I have to ask you, as our EV man, Mr. EV, what was cooler? The DeLorean yes. and Fast and Okay, that's okay. It's All right. Like, cool. Before you even ask, I thought, that, I thought that Mercedes was dope. It's pretty damn sick. It's all, all OLED. So in the sick. Mercedes. So sick. That's even, crazy. even the back seat has a Iris OLED apologizes OLED. for how right. she had done this and OLED you know seat. all this other stuff or whatever. And like she didn't mean to come off awkward at the you know thing where she was pumping him for information. She does want to help him, even though she doesn't really know him and whatever. Yeah. Uh exactly. Yeah, this is like a forced thing. But I think also Iris does on some level know she's he saved her. So I think there is still that too, mm. where it's not this isn't I I know you Barry from college. It is more like you saved my life. I didn't fucking imagine that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was in a horrible car wreck and then I was just outside safe. Right. Um, there's something going on here that's bigger than what I think it is. Um, but I thought we were going to get a couple of lines here as Barry gets the message or whatever that, or once Barry starts realizing exactly what he needs to do and how he can fix his past, like, thanks for inviting me. Actually, this is my place. Never mind. You have to leave. You know, like, 
It was just weird that he just kind of left her in there on that kind of odd. You know, it, as like, is that computer password protected? She's like, yeah. Kid, <laughs> and the flash logo popped up. Like, oh, okay. uh, that's just Lex Luthor's computer that has that shit. Uh, but yeah, that's what happens. Of course, Iris is talking about something completely different. Barry totally interprets it. Of, Wait, like, it's the spaghetti sauce. If I could, or not, yeah, no, no, yeah, if I could do that and make her not forget the spaghetti sauce, then we'd be all fine. This is a great thing. Thanks. He leaves, and I was expecting the Wait, I live here. No, it's more like he pops up. We should do this again sometime. I had a great time. Shuts the door, and then just fucking run, Barry. Run on. It's splitting hairs, obviously, but I mean, it's the same thing, right? He's like, like what was what was the original plan going to be? Just go there and stop whoever killed your mom? And wouldn't it be more fortunate, like beneficial right now to know who killed your actual mom, especially as your dad's on trial? Well, again, his whole thing is that, you know, Path he, he thinks that it was, yeah, Bruce is very clear. You could never touch anything. You could never do anything. His whole thing is that he still thinks it was just a random crime. They saw his dad drive away and they thought they could come steal from the house. So if you eliminate your dad right. leaving the house, then nobody's going to come. It's paper thin and not yeah, necessarily sure. how a real criminal it'd be great if it, they both died <laughs> yeah. but like but they yeah. but they but they reference the butterfly effect right yeah isn't that easy is that and the butterfly effect and kevin correct me if i'm wrong I is that know. you go back in time they step on a butterfly it'll echo through all the time and it could be cataclysmic it's super wrong what is the butterfly effect? butterfly flaps its wings and the oh, right. tsunami in japan or whatever got it so something as simple as that wouldn't that in the super genius like barry's brain be like if i move a fucking can that's the same concept right yeah, no, I mean, there's, yes, yes, of course. The, but I mean, like, this is why Barry Allen fucks up the timeline all the time, is that yeah. he can't really can't rap. Because even, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, he totally fucks it up anyway, right? Like, when he, at the end of the movie, when he comes back, it's like, it, don't get me wrong, I'm totally on the Bruce Wayne side of this, of just, like, by even interacting with your mom and taking those clothes, you've then made it so somebody else wouldn't take those clothes. Right. So, like, what is that? Per or, what happens with you put the extra can in there? So, what happens when they run out of the cans at the time right. they need it? And, like, you slowed your mom down so your mom isn't moving to the same place at the same time. It's yeah, like, it's all that's what that's but it like, right? It's all those brain. ripple changes that fucks yeah. up the timeline and makes Michael Keaton or George Clooney your Batman. I digress. He runs all the way back. He runs to the supermarket. He runs through the supermarket. He gets the can and walks up. Don't forget the tomatoes. <laughs> Puts them in the cart, which also to me, like, and again, like, I wouldn't do this. If you're listening, God and or Satan, if you ever give me powers like this, I wouldn't it's do this. Be Satan. I wouldn't fuck else. with the timeline. You're ready like to clip this. this out, Kevin. Right. But what I'm saying is he goes and puts the tomatoes in the thing, right? Mm -hmm. At which point I'd be afraid of my mom looking down like, oh, I already got the tomatoes. And then Barry brings back the other can of tomatoes, little Barry. And, he, and she goes, oh, we don't need them. And then the whole thing just fucking happens the same way because she gets home and only has the one can of tomatoes. I would have taken two cans of tomatoes put them in there. You know what I mean? If I was breaking the timeline, which I'm not breaking the timeline, I digress. Mm. They put tomatoes in there. Barry runs back. Now. I expected the Satan thing to be a lot worse than just oh, it's coming. two tomatoes. I just it's like coming. to cover my bases. Yeah. You know what I mean? If somebody's out there like, maybe we should give this kid superpowers. Mm. I just want to make sure they understand that I would probably pretty be great with them. I know I'm not worthy of a Green Lantern ring. That probably is before. doing a lot of work right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he runs back. I want everyone to recognize that Greg was like, I know I'm not worthy of a Green Lantern I've ring. I've covered it on content before. I know. I know. It's okay. I know. I would use it for too many pranks on Andy. He definitely would. you be like, why are my mean, pants inflated? Like, that's, that's okay, right? Like, it's... it's. But remember like, when I told you guys, too, how I would, like, interrupt other people in cars? Like, if they were bad, I would, like, come through. I would, like, send in a little, like, you know, like, announcement in there of, like, yo, you fucking suck a drive. And then they'd be, ah! <laughs> Smash the car. And yeah, I but you can, you can catch the car. It's true. I, Nick, I mean, you, you got a strong will is the thing. I do have a strong will. Nick, That's you right. missed it earlier. During Kind of Feudy, Greg just starts laughing out of nowhere, and he goes, I just made a purchase. No, no, he doesn't. He just said, I just got an ingredient. I just got an ingredient for the best That's prank right. ever. Yeah. It's going to be so good. And Nick. they said, who's it for? And he said, Andy Cortez. Yep. And he's telling me this to my face. Yeah. My stomach's growling. Oh, you're We're still going to get you you're with hungry. that movie snack prank. Oh, my God. Anyways. Oh, so he starts running back to time. He's like, I did it. I did it. I saved the day. Mom's going to be alive. And he starts seeing new memories appear, which I thought was cool. Was I thought cool. that was a cool way of doing it. Like, oh, man, he did change time. He's graduating. He's turning 18. That's neat. And then as he runs, what's he see? Ah, monster. Is it Doomsday? Is it Reverse Flash? Is it Zoom? It's, yeah, it's Reverse Flash. They, he knocks him out of the time bubble. This. Knocks him out Looks of the college. so team. stupid. Hate the design of it in the best way. Like, the fuck? How are they going to explain this? And the, by the end of it, I'm like, it works. Y'all explained this perfectly. How the fuck did you make this ugly piece of shit make sense and make me go, yeah, I'm here for this. I'm totally here. He for knocks him out in, sense, though, into you know the I mean? street of it. Yeah, well, paradox, paradox. It's spaghetti. Loose time's not lin paradox. time's not linear. Uh, knocks him out into the front of the house. Barry can't believe what he's seeing. <laughs> And so he walks on in and finds uh, mom and dad there getting ready for Sunday dinner. It smells like basil, I assume. Uh, it wasn't a 4D experience, so, so nobody's walking by blowing basil in my face. You know what I mean? Whatever these idiots go to. Oh, they're going to go to it. 
Uh, anyways, uh, and so yeah, there's a few comments. Oh, you cut your hair. Oh, you, you look old. Blah, blah blah. It's like, oh, we as the viewers are like, okay, cool. We're not in the right time space. Uh, but he hangs out and he eats dinner and he's real hungry, so he eats all of it. And he's having a great time. And then uh, they mention uh, school and he's like, yeah, it's great. And, you know, he's you saw the fucking movie. He's playing along. But eventually, he, it's something that's amiss and he looks outside and sees Young Barry coming through, who does act a lot in this scene, like Marty McFly Jr. Love it. Uh, and he goes, shit, I got a shit, <laughs> whatever. Runs out there, you know, quiets him down. Eventually gets him up. Up in his room explains all this stuff which again i'd be i i've uh, god or satan if you're listening if i ever get the ability to time travel you know i'm gonna be chill i got the secret word everything's gonna be fine what is it again? I, I don't tell you i will never tell you you'll never get me anyways uh and then we get the mcguffins here and the ex explanations and all the stuff right and so they yell at each other they yell down there and they yell the thing and i'm from the few he's but he's not telling them a lot of details he's just telling them the thing or whatever and how he's got to run but and all this seems super simple right like, oh, okay, cool. I got knocked out early. I'm going to go back in the run thing and I'll have the old gray man come after me or whatever. But of course, before he can actually do that, when he's getting ready to leave, the rain comes in. And he's like, what's the date? It's only rained once in Central City. Hold on a sec. And he puts, Great, it Scott. he puts it together, of course, that this was the night he got struck by lightning because he was doing the... Uh, just uh, like Back to the Future. One just point, like Back to the Future. 1.21 gigawatts. One I, gigawatts. I, I out loud said, hey, wait, what's today? And I was like, are they about to pull a 9-11 reference? Like, it was so I don't know why funny. that came to my head. It I'm was like, so funny. what's today? Like this, like this world, like, and then he goes, September. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and he goes, September 8th. And I was like, oh. You looked at me dead in the eyes. You said, I thought it was going to be September 11th thing. And just, oh my God. we kept watching. And then I he, thought it was going to be Man of Steel. And it kind of was. Oh, gotcha. Which, which gotcha. also, like, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, also would kind of, like, What's today? Oh, today's day I get my powers. And then also, in like two days, one day, like the, a the global cataclysm is coming. And even when the thing pops up, he's like, oh, it's Zod. I'm like, you'd remember this sequence of events. I got powers. And then the next day, aliens were real. And they killed thousands in yeah. Metropolis, leveled the city. I, I, I didn't mind that, though, because I, I was like, that explains why going Flash on. wasn't able to help out. He, also cool. He tried. Also and cool. It didn't that work. Awesome. Yeah, I, I thought did that not was really, powers. really cool. That was really, really and cool. And then we also see that, that the new Flash like really does struggle with those. Isn't really, I mean, the phasing thing he nails, but like the rest of it is like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. It's crazy. Exactly. So yeah, getting ahead of, right, so they run him over the crime lab, uh, and then you know we work our way up. We get the phase jokes which we liked or not the phase, the introduction of phasing as they phase through the wall uh we get up there and then yeah put him in the chair but i don't get struck by lightning i don't want chemicals yada yada and this again like i was like i i, I like I, I like where we're going with it but i was like this is a pretty rookie move fast barry of like you, i feel like you could slow everything down so like you're faster than lightning so it's not like as soon as you're how'd you get struck by the fucking lightning you know what i mean and at any point if he I, you, you know I would just, you know, if I'm fast moving, move. Uh, Andy's him. I move behind him and I just hold him down and I just wait and I wait in slow mo. Here mm -hmm. comes the lightning. All right, there's no way you can get out of this one. Yeah. But I digress. He's not as smart as me. You know what I mean? That's yeah, why he no. didn't deserve his powers. I do. That's right. Anyways, uh, he gets shot through the back with the lightning. Shot through the back. Uh, and then he sees uh, Barry two heal from the lightning bolt. And he's like, "Oh, you got your powers. That's great." And so they start trying to escape, and then they run. Yeah, you guys aren't talking about the losing the tooth scene. Where his tooth is yeah. in the other guy's mouth, and it's just like, weird. what a Why? weird little joke to make. And then they, they but, super glue it back in, and all for the bit off. at the end. Yeah, I like that little bit at the end where it falls yeah, out. It's just like, oh, I forgot all about it, so they did a good job of being like, yeah, okay. Um, uh, I mean, did it pay off? I don't know. It no. happened again. Yeah. It's <laughs> fair. Uh, they get downstairs. This is the big reveal then. Of course, Barry doesn't or Barry 1 doesn't have his powers anymore. They're all inside of Barry 2. Very Lois and Clark, as you remember. Remember, Superman powers could be communicated through lightning to other people as they were on the plane to that one guy who passed away recently. I forget what show he was on. Of course, yeah. Well, actually, they're also to the kid. Remember when the, he, Superman, was holding up, Superman was holding up a plane, got struck by lightning, and the kid got the powers, and then the, the mom went public saying she this was Superman's son and she could prove it because he had like superpowers. And it was like, oh, fuck. But then Lois and Clark figured out it was because lightning bolts on the train. But then there was the guy who, Leslie, what, the, who's the guy who just died recently? Leslie Nielsen. Leslie. No, no. The, he's an actor. He was a shorter man. Reminds me of a, an older Patton Oswalt. Doesn't matter, everybody. You'll know what I'm talking about. Chat. There's no way there's, there's another no male Leslie. Put Leslie died actor. And he was, That's I, what I'll look for right know. now. Thank you very much. You're going to be red in the face. I'll tell you what. You'll get yours, Cortez. <laughs> yeah, like right Leslie now, right Jordan? There. Yeah, Leslie Jordan. That's him. I have so no idea who this person oh, is. Man, well, if you watch Lois and Clark, anymore. you would know. He had his own little suit. It doesn't matter. God damn it. I mean, Why don't you ever let me? Why do you always bring up Leslie Jordan? Can I please <laughs> fucking talk about the Flash? There's no reason for this right now. We've wasted so much time. If only someone could rewind oh. time. 
so that I didn't talk about Leslie Jordan and this really, really. Where were you, Greg? And so, you know, Barry, the lightning transfers the powers. Just, mm-hmm. you know, what? I, there's this thing from Lois and Clark. It's not even worth bringing it up. <laughs> Anyways, though, uh, he, he can't he can't face through. So they do the whole thing, and they eventually get out of the they get out of there without the security guards seeing them. Even though the security guards would have seen him real easily, right? Also, there was the funny bit where they phased through the second time through the door, and then the door just slid open behind them. This is early. That I was that, very I great a comedy moment. Yeah. Uh, we get home. Uh, Barry get, Barry one gets Barry two home. Uh, oh my God! This is you, know, you got powers. I got powers, and then he acts like anybody else would just you know running around, jumping on the bed. I probably wouldn't do, but he runs around, jumps around. Eventually, he you know he goes for a big run. So here's the thing: this scene is one of the weirdest things that I said. I'm so surprised by this movie. I am so surprised by this scene. We've seen it a million times in movies. Hey, somebody funny gets powers is going to be a jackass. We get the setup of Looney Tunes on the TV. And then we get the reference of him beating Speedy Gonzalez, and he does the the pose. He's like, oh, he's Speedy Gonzalez, awesome. I've done it thousands and of times. And then he runs, <laughs> and it proceeds to be this wild action scene of him running around that is just a Looney Tunes set piece. It is just him setting a bunch of things up to, to happen. And I'm like, holy crap, somehow this does not feel like Quicksilver scenes in X-Men. This feels like Looney Tunes. They nailed it. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah, this is one that I enjoyed it. And it was like, when it, when it starts off, I was like, I know where this is going, right? And then I, and you didn't didn't i felt like you know as, as it is uh, the lightning's arcing off and setting off this and that's happening in car accidents blah blah, blah. and like I, I really liked it and i especially liked when well he's you know he bursts into flames or whatever right his clothes burst into flames as we knew they would because this has been referenced before uh and then then when he just runs back naked he's like what did you do nothing <laughs> you know what i mean he's got like the symbol over his dick or whatever and like after they played the music and the fucking thing fellow and again straight out of a comic book or a cartoon right the fucking Central City Symphony truck opens up and all this shit. I was like, all right, this is good. Pia- literally a piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, like, but, he's on, like, but he's stuck in a ring of fire. No lights and just a spotlight. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, yeah. so good. Uh, so he does that and then he starts talking about phasing or whatever. And rather than let Barry one finish the sentence, Barry two phases, falls through like Tim talks about. It's so funny. We hear the scream. <laughs> 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 falling through. Yeah, he's like, he looks painful as his like, head hits shit. Uh, he comes back up then with Miss Whoever's pot over his dick as well or whatever. Uh, then he, Are We Always Is Hungry? He starts eating the peanut butter, the rotten broccoli. Everything tastes so vivid. Yada, yada, yada. You try this. It's horrible. Blah, blah. Eventually... He sits down. I think maybe he explains the suit a little bit that he built back in the day. But, but by the time he turns around, Barry 2's falling asleep or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Barry 1 decides, all right, then. I'll go to bed, too, right? I think so. Yeah, because we wake up, obviously, when the roommates wake up. And right. now it's this idea of, mm. oh, no, it isn't, that isn't right. That isn't right, is it? No. Instead, what happens? Does Man of Steel happen here? Or does it then, do, do, we, do we Google everybody and then Man of Steel happens? Or does Man of Steel happen that we Google uh, everybody? He goes to look for someone. Oh, he starts Googling people. Here, okay, I so believe. He, I think he sits on the on the. So he wakes up. Computer. He Googles everybody. He gets a funny Wonder Woman page. We call Arthur's dad. He did not in this universe uh, actually hook up with a Nicole no, Kidman. The, the Zod thing has to happen first because that's, that's the impetus of him Googling everyone, right? That's because why he wants known, to put the team well, it's, it's that thing where you could. Yeah, you're right. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Zod, the, the call happens from Zod. But why were they outside? I vividly remember them being outside. I think they walked Yeah, over. I can't remember. It doesn't matter for the Whatever. point of the long point of this thing. We already know where we're at in the movie. You saw the fucking movie. Um, Zod happens. Oh my God, this is the day Zod comes. And he's this big bad Kryptonian, but there's a good Kryptonian, Kal El. He's Superman. He's Clark. Okay, uh, we got to go do this, but we got to find Clark, but we got to find these people. So he's like, all right, cool. Let's find all the Justice League. Uh, you know, Cyborg hasn't gotten his powers yet. Um, uh, Wonder Woman, nobody can find Wonder Woman, of course, because she's just, you know, doing shit out there in some Paris museum. She's saving malls. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. She went after that. She gave up on humanity. <laughs> uh, and then, well, who else is there? If we go through all these people, and Arthur's not around. Uh, okay, Batman. And then uh, I'm Batman. Yeah. What did you say? She said I'm Batman. And th- this is where the Eric Stoltz conversation happened too. Yeah. Uh, how do you know Batman? Batman's real. Yeah, Batman. Nobody's seen him in years. Blah blah blah. A lot of great comedy in this little sequence. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I want to give a shout out of why there's great comedy to this too. I, I want to say is uh, Cersei Monica Jackson is the actress's name who is from Dairy Girls. And if you've never watched Dairy Girls before, yep. it is a Netflix show about a, a bunch of schoolgirls in Ireland, and it's hilarious. I've heard Joey mention it a million so times. So funny. Uh, so we decide we are off to Gotham City, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to Wayne Manor in a cab from Central City, which this just seems a little too convenient, but okay, whatever. I don't care. 
I'll let it go because we already expressed the you can't run with people, right? You can't run at super speed with people because they'll have a problem. Is this the haunted house? <laughs> we get there, yeah. We do, we already talked about all this, so it's easy to jump through, right? And we'll just jump to the fight scene that then breaks out, right? Which I loved all the storytelling of like the water's boiling. There's one sandal on the ground, and then like Bruce pops out and quietly comes up behind this, kicks him, and then of course Barry too has like super speed, so he can just dodge everything, yeah. even though he doesn't know what's going on. He throws the pizza cutter at him, and he dodges. Oh! <laughs> like he's like, like, he's like the, I, I like this scene a lot because I, out of any way, would have never expected Michael Keaton's Batman to appear this way in this movie. Like we've seen him in the trailers and stuff with the shaved head and stuff. So you're like, huh? Like how? Why would he be doing this? I really liked it. Like you think about No Way Home for a year. We were like, how are they gonna? If they're there, how are they actually gonna come out? None of us could have ever. Tobey bet. Maguire. Tobey Maguire is gonna just fucking walk out. <laughs> I guess <laughs> through faster. a portal, right? Uh, and I feel like this is the other, the other thing where, like, I not would have never seen this coming, and I thought they did a really good job in direct contradiction to Tobey Maguire showing up. I loved it. Uh, love also that they found a creative way to get a stunt person in, in you know, in that yep. kitchen, so that Michael Keaton didn't have to do a lot of physicality stuff. Of course, a man is sixty nine years old. It's probably seventy one. Seventy one. Why do I keep saying sixty nine? Because it's I the magic number. Uh, seventy one. Uh, not unlike my criticism of uh, Kingdom of Crystal Skull, and I'm assuming Dial of Destiny, where that Harrison Ford just does not have the physicality anymore. Look away, Marion! Yeah, I, I, I like that they put him in the dude, you know, thing, and it just it was a fun fight scene. Just want to say this to you in particular, Nick. Sure. So all the the early reviews of Indiana Jones, real, real bad, right? More and more people are seeing the screenings starting to turn a little bit. People like those reviews are absolutely not correct. Okay. So, hey, Listen, we'll see. A, we'll I, see. I, I am. I am. Adult enough and professional enough to eat my words and then pretend like I never said them. Everything uh, slows down in the fight scene. <laughs> Batman asks, are you hungry? I'm making spaghetti. He makes spaghetti. Uh, they We get jumped to the end of the conversation, and he's like, okay, cool. So you're telling me you did this, and he, blah, and he does the whole spaghetti analogy for how, you know, I mean, let me guess. You saw a movie once, and you think that it works this way. Time, of course, isn't linear. You make one change, you're going to change both the past and the future because of uh, you know inter the fulcrum and the intersections and stuff like that. And he's like, you had him in parallel originally. Now you've done this, and you do it enough, and it looks like this, and the spaghetti, and he eats the spaghetti. Implying that this Batman has dealt with this before, which is just interesting to think about, right? I didn't, I didn't catch that. I just thought Bruce Wayne's so smart that he's like this. Yeah, of course, he's theorized how time travel would work. In his time off, he's just been yeah. watching TED Talks. Well, it's always important to remember and point out here that he's not eighty nine Batman. He's clearly that. He's that. He's not our eighty nine Batman. That is clearly who he is. But we didn't jump to the eighty nine universe. We pivoted and made a new universe right. that has this thing in here. That's why I think you go out of the way of like. I wouldn't expect 89 Batman to wear as many ascots as this, this Bruce Wayne does, but he does it because I think it's a callback more to the 66 Adam West Bruce Wayne interpretation. Oh, maybe. Not yeah. that this is Bruce Wayne Adam West, but again, 89 Batman is, it, we didn't jump universes. We've pe gone parallel and made our own here, right? You've done a fractured glass kind of situation here uh -huh. where even though this is our 89 Batman, I don't, th this is not the 89 universe, right? Because we've changed past and present. So we've already fucked with that and done this. And, and what's the tomato sauce? Uh, the analogy is over. No, the no, garnish. Garnish. It's just the garnish. It's just the garnish. Yeah. Just the garnish. <laughs> the garnish. So he lays it. And so you want me to help you stop this, right? Yeah. No, pass. <laughs> he just leaves or whatever. <laughs> and he's like, all right, fuck it. We got to get down to get all his bat stuff. We're going to use his bat tech. Come with me. And then they faces again through the hole into the, down into the bat cave. Weirdly, he doesn't lose his clothes this time, though. And the soundtrack here, phenomenal. Oh, well, God. you can phase and not lose your clothes. Remember, it was the super speed of running that caused friction. That is why he lost clothes. I'm not, make, I'm not saying this makes sense necessarily, sure. but it, even no when way. Barry won phase, he didn't lose his clothes either. I thought when he phased down into the bottom, though, the tambourine was still on, on the floor. I thought, it, I thought it was like, you know, Terminator where he goes through the bar. Sure. Tink. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't he bring them out of the thing. robe when he did that, right? And the robe. Oh, that's right. And the, yeah. that's what it was, Kevin. Yeah, the robe right. stayed there. I Maybe just he just had to figure he hadn't out. Learned, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Fair it makes enough. sense. Nick, I want you to tell me. What'd this do for you? God. It, it hit so hard seeing this Batcave again. Seeing it, it really, for me, the iconic part of the Batcave is the, 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 the place where we spent much, a lot of the time was the computer, but also that, that roundabout, the lazy Susan that turns the Batmobile around. And just seeing it under the, the tarp for the first time, under the cover for the first time, and seeing all of it, and, and just having it kind of fully realized in a way that we hadn't seen before was so well done. But it didn't, I think one of the biggest pops I got, and it's dumb, and it's cheesy, and it makes no sense was when Barry number two walks up to him with a bag and goes, hey, this bag is laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my God, they, these are fans. 
these are guys my age who are writing this movie and are like, we're gonna throw everything in here for for Nick sitting in the sitting in that theater. And I enjoyed the shit out of it. I mean, you know, I know we've talked about this stuff a bazillion times, but we grew up in different ways watching Spider Man, Tobey Maguire. Like I was like what 10, 11 years old around that. Nick, you were you saw Batman eighty nine in theaters. I was nine years old. You were nine years old. You saw that movie in theaters. It meant so much to you. And here we are getting that character back. Like. This is just wild that movies are here. Completely wild and just completely, what a fun ride. What a fun ride getting in there. What did you think, Greg? Oh, my God. It was a dream come true. You know what I mean? Again, this is what I talked about uh, in terms of both the t- tone of the movie and where we're at with the DCEU and what the characters are here, but then the ability to have reverence for DC as a wider property. Um, you know, the idea of what we get here, the reverence paid to it, the touchstones to it, the little things of like, you know, again, it is 89, but it's not 89, but there's going to be all these touchstones to it. So, like, having that weird-ass fucking mouse with the, the mouse, ball, yeah. that, like, the one he had. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, I love those little touches. And it was so cool to see Michael Keaton and him being suited up and doing all these things, let alone at the end to see the multiverse and see how they did that and have all the cameos they, they put in there and created. Like, yeah, like, when he came in, it's like we'd already seen it from trailers of him flipping the switches and stuff. But still, I just reveled in it. And it was just an amazing moment just to be back bah. there. Yeah, yeah. Bah. Yeah. Mm. Ah, so good. And so, of course, uh, yeah, with the, everything just happened with the bag, uh, Barry, too, you know, yells at him a bunch of times in here. Um, I forget if this is when they have the big blot or whatever. And I think well, so. I'm just going to toss it in there that they do around the bag and everything else. You don't take anything seriously. You don't know how good you have it when he has a monkey. A monkey it's just a monkey. Mom calls us a monkey. She gives us monkey shit all the time. I thought that was great, of course. Again, like this Barry has grown up with the mom. So, like, yeah, the one monkey was going to be thousands of monkeys, right? It wouldn't have mattered the same way, which is really powerful, I thought. Um, However, they eventually settle their beef enough to where he apologizes and whatever, and they, he goes to sleep in the Batmobile, which I fucking loved. I, I thought this was going to be the thing that kind of sets them both apart. I thought this little blow-up argument was going to be the thing that made one resent the other the more, uh, even more or whatever. And the fact that that didn't happen until, like, you don't get the... Uh, what's the bad flash called? What's his... Reverse, reverse flash. flash. Yeah, you don't get that stuff until way later. I thought this was going to be the thing that, like, all right, well, I don't need you anyway, and they peace out. Because, like, I felt like it was so badly acted in this moment. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was just, it felt, like, very shoehorned in, and we need some sort of conflict here. And I don't know, I just wasn't a huge fan of this blow-up. But the I music agree. I like that it didn't up. go, they didn't push him away. Like, they're going to go off yep. and do their own thing. They suck it out here. Uh, Barry has a heart-to-heart with Bruce over the camera, where, of course, he explains this is about his parents and everything else. Of course, he's using the computer to try to find Clark Kent, to try to find Kal-El. Um, to, he's looking through for, you know, unidentified objects that have fallen, and w- if anybody's gotten them in Kansas, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, Barry, number two, hears that, understands a little bit more for Barry, number one. Uh, Barry one passes out at the computer. Eventually, you know, Michael Heaton stands up and goes over and uses the whoosh like thing to do his little cool entrance. Again, very much like 66 Batman, right? With the Will Shakespeare hit the thing button, the, the two poles or whatever. Um, but it's his parents, uh, his parents, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Here he yeah. moves a pi- the picture yeah, of the parents, yeah, yeah, yeah which exactly. is great. So you think he's touching it and he just moves it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eye scanner hits him. And you're yeah, like, yeah, oh. yeah. And I got to tell you, as you guys know, uh, the 89 bat suit is my favorite, right? And I, 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 for a second, I was like, He's, it's got to be the 89 bat suit, right? We got to put him in that at least once. But no, I'm actually glad that it was just a room full of suits, and it's like a newer version of whatever those other suits were. It's kind of a, a combination of 89 and uh, Batman Return suit, and I thought it looked really good on him. Um, well, we're not there yet, even right? Because he, but we see it though. We, we see, it, see like, all right, his cool suits in the cool Arctic suit. suit and this suit Come and that. On, other. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. so tight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Barry, of course, wakes up. There's a hot cup of coffee next to him. Uh, Barry number two comes over. They fig- they talk. Okay, you know, he did it for me. He cracked this thing. You know, it turned out he went down into Russia this time. He's got uh, a back door into the NSA. Of, of course, course he, he does. does. Uh, we're going to go get that. And then, and then as they're talking about, how are we going to get to Russia? <laughs> bat wing comes down, extends out. Dude, and then, the bat wings, like, spinning circles and awesome. things. Just gyro shit is so tight. Unnecessary. But awesome. It's so nineties <laughs> toy. So awesome. And like yeah. that's everything about really. him is a nineties toy, right? It, it yeah, feels yeah, like yeah. the animated series as well as the, the, the Tim Burton Batman's man, just so cool. But it's also the the uh Tumblr motorcycle wheels spinning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. And so yeah, then this is where Michael Keaton comes out full bat suit up. Oh my god, oh my god, yeah, that's right. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. And uh, of course this is you're gonna need well, he actually said already you need to ride to Russia, then he comes out and the suit right. goes on. Oh, Greg. Greg, no, not again, Greg. The universes are colliding. Welcome to a podcast within a podcast. 
the best bat suit where we rank all the Batman bat suits from the Batman Cinematic Universe and now the Flash. Remember, we've already done this once. Uh, we are now talking about where we're putting the new Flash regular black on black bat suit. Uh, number one, of course, is the bat suit and uh, the Batman's bat suit and Batman. Number two is Dark Knight slash Dark Knight Rises. Number three is Phantasm. Number four is Batman Returns. Number five is Batman Begins with Lore Cape. Number six is Batman Forever Normal. Number seven is 89 Batman. Number eight is Lego Batman. Number nine is the Flash black and blue. We already saw. I got to put that or I'll screw that or Affleck. I'll put Affleck. Uh, and then it goes on. I don't think we're going lower than that, probably. Andy, Where do you want to put this amazing You want to talk about a beautiful suit? mouth hole. Look at that wide that bad boy is. Look at that strong-jawed mouth hole that is. Love the eyes there. He just looks dope in this. Come on. Don't love this part, though. Just I don't, I don't love that. You're talking about the cowl, right? Turn it, to, turn it to the camera. Let me see it. I guess I can't. Yeah, I'll, I'll flash this to you. I can't even I'll, really tell what's happening in the shoulders there. It's hard for me to decipher what's happening. the cape situation. Yeah. So where do you want to rank it, then? I, I think it's pretty cool. I don't think that it stands out necessarily above the 89 one or anything. So it's like, I, I will abstain from this where oh, wow. I, I think it's kind of middle. It's, it's, it's high mids. There you go. High mids. Uh, Andy, do you have something to say about There's where you a think lot of leftover leather in the mid in the neck section well, you know you, you get if you 71 also, years old you don't want to sandwich yourself into those tight ones anymore Come what on. i noticed about this one no under for the nose mm. you love know that. what i mean like it love that. you can see off the nostrils and the bridge and the hate nose and the that nose. they put that in the in the athletic suit because it felt the whole suit just felt so closed off you need to see a couple humanistic parts of him to not when you're trying to instill fear into the hearts of gotham <laughs> all right fine then so i'm assuming then where do you want to where do you where do you want to go with where are we at with the 89 suit? 89 is number seven on this list we could put this right underneath that. I go I'm below 89. All right, yeah. sounds good we'll to go me. Right the Flash that. traditional suit. Because we put the return suit pretty high, right? Because return yeah, suit. Yeah, number four. All right. Uh, we get in the Batwing. We fly, fly over to Russia, where of course there's a black side prison that has uh, Kal-El, or so we think, in it. Uh, we land, we jump down, we get the little comedic scene we already talked about, where oh, they bump over and knock over a bunch of shit. Uh, there on the run, Batman drops down. A lot of fight scenes are happening here. Things are getting shot. Michael Keaton's constantly putting cool up his stuff, cape. Man. This goes back to what Nick was saying. Like, I like that they they tried. To, it's clearly a modern movie. It's CG. There's a lot of bullshit nonsense. But this is 89 Batman. Like, the way that they choreographed his fight scenes and the way he moved and no. stuff felt very Let's different than Ben Affleck or any of the other ones we've seen. I apologize. I was looking up other full-length pictures of uh, the Batsuit to look at to potentially bring up, even though we've passed that point. Yeah, my apologies. Yeah. You guys have you guys know my one thing that I just need to see in a Batman movie in order for it Nips. to really be a fucking Batman. Nips is number two. Number one, Batman to come through a fucking skylight. And use his cape to glide That's down it. to the ground. You get a lot of gliding. What do we get here? Where's your parachute? I don't need one. I actually don't think he says anything. I think he just, he just glides it out smile, and yeah. pops it. And I'm like, Michael Keaton smile. Yes. And you see that the, is the whole point the of his cape in the, the moon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah. And so, oh, did it go up to the to the no? Like the simple, as uh, he fell out, the way the cam was framed, you see Batman like going down, and you just see the the bat wing. Silhouetted the, against the whatever. Silhouetted. Yeah. It's so cool. Oh, it's so dope. I love it when he just glides. I love that the, the cape is like his superpower. That's like his the way he flies. It's so cool. We All brawl through everybody here. We you know stop the gun bullets, yada, yada, yada. Eventually, we break away. We get over to Kal-El's uh, chamber or whatever, right? Uh, we get shot, right? Flash. Not yet. I think that's after. Um, we get, oh, we we get Kara him. out. We get Stop. Kara out. We brawl in there. We open the damn thing. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so, no, because it, it would have been a bigger deal, I think. that Because it's, yeah, no, it's not yet. Right, it's not right. yet. Uh, we get in there, and guess what? Shockingly, it's not Kal-El. It's someone else. Who's this? She's all uh, sickly and, and whatever. They pick her up. She's got no color in her. Barry number one carries her and says, don't worry, I got you. Uh, they go, and they're doing this. More guys sh show up. This is when Barry number two goes. I got this. Runs over to try stops it and like does a few things to stop things, but then takes a bullet to the leg. He's like, ah! just, dude, he just murders that scientist. Just punches yeah. him. Yo, that full guy's force, that guy's gone. And that guy hits yeah. the side of the container, the 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 hallway. Yeah, that guy's dead. Done. Um, want to give a shout out? I watched Flashpoint like last week, just to prepare for nice. this the animated yeah. movie, and I love the the reversal here because this is that scene happens obviously in the comics and in, in the animated movie, but I love how frail. Uh, Superman, Superman is in that, is, yeah. and then you pop it to the sun, and they should literally show Super Girl, uh, Super Girl, Super, Super yeah, Girl, just inflating her hand when she yeah. gets the sun. It's so we're not there yet. I'm sorry, but it's fine. So rad, Super and I, awesome. I love the the red sunroom. I love the, yep. the design of all of that. Which, of course, once again, separating us from what we've seen before in Man of Steel, because of course, remember it was the atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen, that gave it oh. powers. The atmosphere wow. in a incredibly stupid 
twist of uh, script writing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, they had to give they... Zod a reason to have to have that little breathalyzer of the scuba don't Steve even, mask. Don't even, don't even, <laughs> you know, because otherwise he'd be OP. Don't, just even, come don't, even, like, don't awesome. even, don't even, don't even. Let's go. We're already running out of time. So, anyways, uh, they get, yeah, they go. He gets shot. Now Batman's got to carry a, a Barry two. Barry one still carrying Kara. They eventually get to the top where they're, I forget, knocked over by an explosion or, or just a big punch or whatever. And Kara gets like thrown over there where, yeah, we just see her hand hanging so out slowly sick. inflating, looking fucking rad as hell. Uh, this is where everybody gets up. They're surrounded by guards. There's, a, you know, they've all got their guns. Uh, Barry two, I think. You know, Barry one's like, what do we do? And this is in the Batman goes, this is where we try not to die. And then they move the camera, I think, or he moves. No, he, he balls his fist up. Yeah. And as he does that, he like moves it out of the way. And that's when you and see the, all the guns go up. You see car up on the sky, ready to the fucking sky. wreck her captors, which <gasps> she does in you know, just awesome fashion. Just so dope. Through brawling through and destroying these uh, motherfuckers. Of Never course. loved how the, the Man of Steel people look uh, moving. In these movies, oh, sure. and this this whole fight yeah. scene for me, it's more of just like, ah, right, this is the stuff I don't really love about. Oh, I liked it. Shit. Uh, she knocks everybody out though, and then the very end collapses. Right, falls to the ground. Everybody climbs in the old Batwing. They fly back to Gotham City in two seconds because Russia and everything's very close. It's mm -hmm. a very, in this multiverse, this world's very small. Uh, that's why you can drive from place to place. Uh, they get there. Um, Barry number two is healed. Uh, Kara eventually pops up, and you know they're talking. She gets a, they explain everything. Take her up to the sun, to the you know the top of the manor. Let her get some sun. Uh, they take her up there. She of course refuels. Um, she looks awesome. Her suit is so freaking. Is it, actress named Sasha Kelly. Is that how you say it? I don't know how you say it, but her name's Sasha. Yeah. Kaye. Love. Crush. This is great. So good. Awesome. Also, before the comments really tear me, away, more of her. tear me apart, remember that Sun, even though it was an atmosphere thing, they made a point to say in this Man of Steel, Superman did recharge in the Sun after he fought the uh, the world engine. So I'm, it is whatever the fuck, and I'm just fucking around. Anyways, I, got, I don't want these Snyder kids coming. You don't me, you know? Know. I'm a Snyder kid. Don't worry. Please. Guns down. This is the guy who didn't believe the Snyder Cut existed. Guys, you should watch this whole thing in 4-3. It makes so much sense for 23. <laughs> uh, Barry number two is like, yo, and this is what's happening. In Zaz and she's like, yo, this fucking world sucks. I landed here, and they just put me in a cage and tortured me forever. And I learned perfect English, even though I was in this Russia thing. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, they're going to do this thing. And she's like, I'll fucking see it about myself or whatever. And she flies off. And he comes down. He's like, all right, she left. And then Barry number one is like, all right, cool. I got to get my powers back. That's what we're going to do. Uh, we'll follow Supergirl over to the Sand Flats or whatever uh, where we get uh, behind uh, the scene of the army meeting with Zod for the first time. Of course, Zod has said he wanted Superman. Of course, in Man of Steel, they delivered Superman. In this instance, they do not deliver Superman. Did he say Superman or the Kryptonian? Kryptonian. Okay. I'm, I was I'm, say I'm because... using your... I'm, yeah, he's it, well aware he killed kal -El. He's yeah, not okay. there for that. Uh, anyways, though, we get the other side of that. And I was like, for a second, I was like, are they going to go and like make the dude fucking Swan be actually, you know, be a Martian Manhunter? No. It's like, all right, cool. Multiverse. And again, we're not in our yeah, yeah, universe yeah. anymore. Everything's changed. Um, so they just start laying waste to everybody. But then she goes, no. And they look up and they see her. And she's like, ooh. And she, she's speeding no. Gonzalez's, Gonzalez's out of there. Back in the Batcave, it's they, we got to do this. And this is super stu stupid, but we need 1.21 gigawatts. So they got a bat kite up in the air that's going to harness the power Love to it. bring it down to Love shock it. him. To, yeah. Love that if Batman needs to figure out in any universe how to harness lightning, he's got a machine. He's got that a bat thing it. ready to do it. <laughs> and he's wearing the cool... Uh, like Wayne Garage uh, uh, jumpsuit. I was gonna ask if there is a there is a point in Returns right where he is wearing that jumpsuit, or maybe Alfred's wearing the jumpsuit. Someone's wearing the jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah, that, ju that jumpsuit's been seen before. Again, I'm did not. Did he have the ascot? No, he did not have the ascot. God, I, in my brain, I'm thinking. I, my memory is that he had. The I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I'll look it up. But again, like that wouldn't be wrong. I mean, they're putting all the touchstones of '89 in there. Love it. But I'm just stressing as a nerd to t tell you all we didn't jump to the '89 universe. I digress. Because if we jump, it doesn't matter. Anyways. Uh, I want to have this conversation with you at a later date. Sure. Anyways. Uh, so, that's all happened. Congratulations. Uh, oh, now the lightning bolt comes down. It shocks Barry, but it doesn't work. He's zapped. And he's like, do it again. And he goes to throw it again, but the board sorts, shorts out. And he's like, oh, I'm never getting my powers back. This is super sad. And then what do we see? We see Supergirl up in the sky. She comes down. She says, don't worry, I got you. Scoops him up, takes him up into the sky. He gets electrocuted a few thousand times, I assume. Uh, they come back down. They put him on some rocks. He's all like fucking burned and gross. It's weird as hell. All this is weird. I hate it. Comic like, too. This but, is where it's like yeah, super like comicky. Then like, we're going to like, totally wrong. Extra Cute you with Think of Mr. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, of course he is. Uh, but like even Batman helping him with lightning and stuff, it's like you guys just think lightning is what made him this. Like, and this is me not knowing Flash like that. Like that one thing with the chemicals and all of it, maybe I missed something here, but just him getting shocked. No, but by they, lightning. they had they had chemicals. They had the chemicals around it. 
I yeah. That, so did, what about when she brought him up? A chemical is still on him. Okay. Yeah, they I need to the, shock him again. No, they, they, I, they dragged this straight at a flashpoint where he gets like burned. Yeah, and yeah. They yeah. Just, he's like, hit me again. No, hit me again. And it's just needed to jump. I think just the way that it was, uh, this was supposed to be like a very kind of hype, awesome moment with her rising up there. Like it just didn't deliver for me at all. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to chase something for Nick, but I don't know my H- HBO Max password. I can I can log in as well and, and double check. Go ahead and look at Batman Returns. Just the scene password. you're thinking about is when someone's fixing the Batmobile. Yes, right? the scene you're thinking about is when he's uh, he's already split it in half or whatever. Remember, and he's sitting in the Batcave working on it. Yes. That's what you need to go look at. Okay. Um. So she brings him down. He's healed. We got our powers back. Yay. Um. Barry number two makes his own suit out of the bat suit or whatever. And, like, and we're not going to rank this suit for your, the record because this, of course, is a flash suit. We don't have a flash segment. Of we're course, not, we're not ranking. Pretty suit. damn sick. It's like it's whatever. fun. I like it. Yeah. It's fun. Him and the the joke of him cutting off the cow stuff. So yeah. I, and stuff everything's going faster than that. It worked. Man. It worked. Funny little beat right there. Very. Um, like very Cornetto trilogy yes. type stuff yeah. with all the fast action. We're c- we're making the sewer spray painting. Let me just cut off the ears. Worth pointing out too, we skip past it of when uh, Barry number two in Russia after making the uh, amount of noise moved Barry number one. He goes, "What did you do?" And he's like, "Moved just a little," <laughs> just like, and kept you. I thought that was really funny. That got me good. Um, so now they've got it assumed. What uh, they've got everybody assembled. What do we call? Are we the? So what'd you call us? The Justice League. We're not. The, I guess we kind of are the Justice League. We got a Batman. We got a Flash. We got a. Yeah. We got a uh, Supergirl. Let's go. Uh, fuck up Zod's world or whatever, right? And so again. Now we're just going to go fuck up Zod's world. But and before we get that, we get the, the other line that I was like, oh, God, I don't think this is going to play. Oh, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. You want to get nuts? Let's get, let's nuts. get nuts. And I'm like, all right, fine. Fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> let's have it. Uh, in a, a dope line. You know what I mean? I was with I you, too. I don't want to say dope, but I, I appreciate I, that. They it, no, I'm, I'm saying dope. Totally. You, yeah. you can say whatever the fuck you want that's when you fair. go watch another movie. You're just out there saying that normally, oh, right? That's just the classic Swap and release. Swap and release. And it's like, whatever. I do want to point out just way earlier in the movie. Uh, when Wonder Woman does show up, Frank, there is like Frank, an Frank, a very Frank. like obvious pause for a pause applause. For applause. Right. And she's doing Gal Gadot just stares. She shows up and, 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 and she stands the way, there. And she's like they had the same pause. Did you miss me? <laughs> Whatever the fuck is very, very awkward. How much money do you think Gal Gadot's making from just like one day of shooting in the costume, staring there like doing that knowing look? Like yeah, that's right, it's me, Wonder Woman. Not enough. Hey, whatever. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, so now we head out to fight this army of Kryptonians who are fighting a bunch of military people. And this is a, one for me in particular where it was just like, let's turn the brain off on everything, right? Because, like, it's an army of Kryptonians who could then cut through all these. Mil- There's no argument that they'd destroy the military in two seconds, right? They don't hear. And so then I'm, like, wrestling with, well, I'm like, I talked to Kevin about this at the end where he was like, it's surprising this happened. He was hung up on something else. I was hung up on this stuff. of just being like, well, I'm like, again... It was the atmosphere they stuff they talked about, and they have their he- suits on. They never take their helmets off, right. so they never got to full power, so maybe that's why. But then I was like, well, in Man of Steel, Clark's been living here his entire life and is super charged up, but they show up, and they never take their mask off in the first fight, and he doesn't dominate them. So it's just a back and forth. Of, you know what? Let's not worry about it. Let's just watch the movie and see uh, Fiora again and see the big non that's not non. Come on, Great. Barbie. Whatever. I do love so the fact far. that he's like, wait yeah, a minute, man. are these guys like they're, like they're super powered? They're basically as strong as, as Supergirl? And he goes, yeah, but they're not as fast as us. Proving that at the end of uh, Justice League, he won the race. Well, remember, of course, that movie doesn't exist. We have confirmed that the Snyder Cut is the real one in which no one was happy and raced. There was no happiness. <laughs> And not only was the noise, right. there was the moment where Superman looks at the Flash running. Yeah, was this like Zod will here too? Was this whole desert thing just kind of you know, hey, we're not going to have it in a big city again where millions and millions die? Was this where we see Pete in Smallville? Where was this? Or was this no, 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 no. This the, well, this again is a new timeline, and we split up. Right, the world right, engine right. is at, working at this point, right? Yeah, right. He activates in Metropolis, and yeah, they don't want us to see that because yeah. they got so much shit about it last time. So they have a big fight in the desert sand flats where they don't have to. Again, it's different actions of why you'd be in different places because of everything that's happened. Tell you what, they show that kid and, and the dad, and I'm yeah. like, we're surely going to get back to them and save them. <laughs> Just letting you know that in this world, they're everyone still there. Dies. They're I still think, there. Doesn't everyone die in this world? No, because I mean, well, I don't, you know how far it got. Well, yes, you're right. Yeah. You're right. By the end of this, terra- by the end of this, yes, right? the, the Zod wins, and yeah, they yeah. would terraform the universe, which I love, into uh, infinity. Yeah, that's cool. But anyways, before all that happens, lots of fights. I don't know how much you want to get into and what you want to do, but you know the Barry thing where they ran around and they went foot to foot and went like that. I thought that was cool. Hated love the music oh, in that the, moment. The, yeah, they had a weird music choice. stuff. Yeah, it's because it was 
we, we were on such a good streak with, um, you know, uh, watching Michael Keaton do awesome stuff with the soundtrack. Like, anytime we see him in the Batwing, it's back to that sort of Tim Burton symphonic sort of vibe, you know? And then that little rock scene just really fell out of nowhere. I it needs to break off. Of and it. if you're going to do a song like that, it has to be like, it has to hit perfectly. It has to be like Come Together by Aerosmith or something like that. You know, it has to be like that perfect combination. And yeah. Just a little bit off. Yeah. I'm with you. Music was, was weird here, but I liked what we saw. Like, I think like all the, like the flash running around hitting everybody in the nuts was like just so stupid and perfect. The Come on Barbie, Let's Go Party is like so dumb, so fucking dumb. Love the delivery of it. I think only Ezra could have made that work, and two Ezra's doing it was like, this isn't even a joke. The one other one that I I liked was the what was it? Um, beef. Beef. Yeah, <laughs> beef, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Like I that. think it's so, totally beef. So stupid. I don't know what it means. I was like, beef yeah. or beaver? Beef. I, I need captains. Beef, I, could, I didn't know beef. what they were. Yeah, I think it was beef. Like, yeah, which is like so dumb, but it know, it worked for me. I thought I like know. that the delivery of that stuff was funny, and uh, these fight scenes, them running around constantly in different ways, like running off of each other. I was like, this is really just cool, way man. better than Skittles taste the rainbow. Yes, in Shazam. Oh yeah, I remember that. Jesus Christ. I, like <laughs> that. I just watched that movie two weeks ago in preparation for this. God, yeah, I was. So, I'm so sad. I missed that in review. <laughs> so <laughs> sad. Uh, you're not. I'm not. Um. So, anyways, uh, they, all these fights happens, but guess what? Eventually, uh, I'm gonna go in after the big one. That's a stupid decision, and he slams his his thing into it to kill it. Batman dies. Uh, then Kara is fighting Zod. She catches a needle to the chest when she, she turns off the world engine, which was dope. Then get stabbed through the chest. Then they extract the Kryptonian. Uh, 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 codex from her. Uh, it also, we've been revealed, of course, which I thought was really cool. For some reason, I got choked up when he was like, "The infant didn't survive the procedure." And she, her performance of screaming, Dude. I was like, "Damn, that hit!" Like she you know kicked I mean? ass. Yeah, in this movie. she well, was they, great. They set up a great poem, what moment where she was sent there to protect him. Yeah, right? and she failed, and it's horrible. Yeah, and it's sad. Yeah, like I, I really just want a standalone movie with her, watching her get pissed off and just fuck up gigantic armies of people. I think so she could carry it. I think yeah. she did a great job. She was fantastic. Uh, but anyways, they extract it. She dies. Uh, okay, well, we're going to lose this one. Well, we're the Flash. We can run it back. They run it back. They come back. They try. They. <laughs> Do you know what you're going to change? I know what I'm going to change. Maybe we should talk about this. <laughs> no, man. They're just off to change it. Bruce, it's got a shield. Don't do that. Good to know. Of course, non-man jumps up there. He gets him. He still kills him. Uh, the fight happens. And that's in, in Superman 2, right? That the the one of Zod's dudes was this big dude named Non, mm. uh, but like uh, uh, they don't never call the, they just call him the the space giant, giant alien. Yeah. I think a Man of Steel they never gave him a name either. I don't think I think they did, but I think it wasn't Non Zod or so Non. Yeah, it's so weird. I'll look it up. Thank you. Um, uh, and I, so he's gonna be Non to me. Anyways, uh, and then yeah, Supergirl gets caught and killed again, right? And so then they I run. I how quick the stuff was. The reset. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Like and the differences they made of like Batman not going. Like I just thought it was well uh, edited. Uh, of course, eventually, I, we skipped that at some point when Bruce was giving his initial spaghetti thing he talked about. I noticed you have an Alfred, too. There's some things that are going to be constant throughout it. What do they call them? They, there's like a con, con, canon events. It was canon events, but it wasn't it's that. It's not it was, that, but it's whatever. You saw the fucking movie. Don't get on my case about it. Yeah, yeah it's not uh, good in this case. Uh, Fulcrum. No, we're talking about Fulcrum is where they twist it. They yeah. turn it or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, and so Barry, number one, eventually figures out of like, oh, man, like losing this world's going to die this world is destined to die there's nothing we can do this is a canon event for them in this sort of like the destiny or like the it is the inevitabilities or whatever sure know. sure sort of like another superhero movie we watched like a week ago <laughs> that, no, i'm gonna do it my own way all right <laughs> anyways though uh and then barry uh, number two can't accept this and keeps running back but he's getting fucked up by zod and he's getting pieces of metal as soon as he had the first one in his arm i was like um i got you i, I see what I you're did. doing i did i, see what I was you're like doing. that's Kind of cool. Yeah. Actually, I kind of love that. Yeah, I was like, okay, cool. And, but then I was like, it doesn't matter. I, 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 well, it doesn't matter. We're about to get there. I didn't see the ending coming of like, I thought he would still become that guy. I like that he turned on himself. But again, time not linear. Time, you know, all happening at once or whatever. Um, Science go far here. Science go far here. Like we said, so as here. this all happens, you keep seeing it. They have, they're tearing t holes in their Coliseum of space time, right? Or whatever. All this shit's going wrong. And then we start seeing the multiverse at this point. I forget if Reverse Flash shows up first. But we're seeing, for my money, we're seeing the other uh, multiverses pop up there, right? And then Reverse Flash shows up, and he tries to fight. We got off on the wrong foot. Then, uh, you know, Barry number two comes through, punches him, reveals the face. Wait, I know that scar. And you have the other thing. I forget what it was. But it's like, that's me. I'm you. And I'm you. And he's like, I've been doing this longer than you could possibly imagine, which I thought was awesome. It's 
fucking awesome. We've seen it a million times, this type of thing. For some reason, he said that. I'm like, yeah. Like, I think the movie just set itself up, right, so that when these moments happen, we're celebrating them instead of rolling our eyes. Yeah, exactly. It was really well done. And so uh, that all happens, the conversation. But look around, you were destroying it, and then it was look around, we're, you know, destroying other realities, right? And this is before this, we had started going into them, right? And so we see George Reeves' uh, black and white universe, uh, right? The universe that happened that in. Cool. Fucking insane. <laughs> we, of course, pop in, and it's like, which Superman universe are you in now? We're in Christopher Reeve's Superman universe, the Donner universe, fucking insane. Didn't need Helen Slater showing up at the end, but I don't mind. You know what I mean? A Superman, a car there. Again, back to what we're talking about of like effects and stuff. We talked about it at the very top. A lot of the Barry faces were weird and bad. Sometimes it was in a one shot where I was like, why didn't we just use Ezra Ezra there? What are you doing? I don't know. I'm not a movie maker. I don't know. This is one where it's like, it wasn't Rogue One Leia, but it also wasn't Mark Hamill in uh, the Boba Fett thing. You know what I mean? Where it was like, okay, I'm this, uh, this Christopher Reeve bit doesn't hit as hard because it just doesn't look right enough to me personally. Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, I do not have the reverence that you do for, yeah. for those things. Like I thought this was perfect because it was so uncanny Valley that it looked like they weren't even trying to make it real. And that it and looked again, like a cartoony representation. Yeah. Like, cool. Uh, good shit. Y'all. Okay. So it was numb, which is weird. But I think the thing we were thinking of was Ursa was the, her name and Feora was her name in Man of Steel. No, I was thinking of how they never called the big guy by his name. Okay, but well, I think his name is Nam, like, like Namek. Okay. But I could be wrong. I mean, I'm a kid watching this movie, so this looks like him. I'm with Tim. Well, the... Tim. Oh, yeah, well, so Namek, yeah. but so uh, it's Versus what? Non. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. So I'm right. I thought you were trying to tell me I was no, 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 you are, you are Don. Yeah, yeah you are no, no, I'm saying his yeah. name's Non. Well, yeah. My confusion was that I always thought the, the, the female, like, baddie, like, heavy in, in Man of Steel was Ursa. It's not no, Feora. Yeah, which but I said in this in episode. Superman 2. Yeah, I disagree. Yeah. Okay. I was, it's okay. I was mistaken. <laughs> my bad, my bad. My, we're podcasting within a podcast <laughs> in Nick's head right now, too. I'm, I'm with Tim. Right. I think Andy. I think it was so stylized that I was okay with it. Like, it didn't feel like you know, stomping on the graves of the dead whenever we talk about bringing back people that aren't alive sure. anymore or you get into that weird and kind I, of like, is, is this like ethically okay sort of thing? This one felt okay because they did look so CG. <laughs> I just thought it was a nice way of saying like, hey guys, we're going to just, we're going to just celebrate all the Superman yeah. of the eras and just give a little shout out to him because we might not get back to this moment for a very long time. And that was my thing. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. I loved it. I'm glad it's there. I'm not one of these people. I saw it when I tweeted about it. I was like, oh, robbing the graves. And I was like, oh, no. Like, I, I want DC to pay their respect. I just, it was for me, it just, it, I thought it was a little too fake. But I do agree that it looked fake in, in that sort of world, right? Or whatever they were doing with it. Let alone their time bubbles always looking fake and doing exactly. something. Exactly. Anyways, we had all that. Then we jump in, yes, to Nicolas Cage, of course. The Superman Lives script from Kevin Smith of the giant robot. And then Nicolas Cage in his suit that we've seen leaked for the Tim Burton. Uh, Love that yeah. documentary. Yeah. It was so good. It was just such a great, rewarding moment of like, hey, we're about to get a whole bunch of cameos here. And I love that this movie, when it had cameos of like old school stuff, like sure, there was the Snyderverse uh, stuff in the beginning of the movie, including Alfred, to get Keaton stuff, to get, all right, we have Supergirl, it's a, a variant, whatever, of Superman, or uh, that version of the story at least, to get here, it's like, here's all the cameos in a way that absolutely makes sense of because they are running through this time thing and they're breaking it there. I'm like... Hell, hell yeah, man. Like, I love this. This doesn't get in the way of the movie. And, like, all the people who are like, oh, they're just going for cameos. It's like, no, man. There's a movie around this shit, too. And, again, I realize DC has made it complicated with the DCU, DCEU, yada, yada, yada. Even though Marvel fans and movie fans, I should say, are well-versed now in multiverses and stuff. Like, this, for me, is, an, is setting up a nice way to leave the DCEU. And it, like, yep, it still exists in its own world. It's its own bubble. If they want to do stuff with it, they could. And they want a bubble. And I know they're already confusing that. But it's like, it was nice to see, like, what a weird idea the multiverse is and how to visually represent that. And is this the best way to do it? As you and I were talking about it, it's a very comic booky way. And I've seen it done worse in comic books. And I've seen it done better. But it was like, you know what? I felt like this worked. And it, literally them... Smashing the together. Colliding. Yeah, it was cool. And he says worlds collide. I thought yeah. that was dope. And that, you know, sets uh, Barry number two into the camp of like, oh, this is wrong. Uh, reverse Flash then is there. Like, well, what are you going to do? Reverse Flash tries to kill Barry number one. Barry number two takes the blow. Reverse Flash. Adam West, we also see. Right. Sorry. Batman, Batman. 66 universe. Right. The, uh, yeah. Uh, then we see uh, uh, Reverse Flash die. Uh, Barry number two dies. Barry number one realizes what he has to do right. Uh, he runs all the way back to set all of this right and take the tomatoes away from his mom. <laughs> 
That's a funny little sentence to say, it right? It is. It's the green tomatoes. But he gets there uh, and then steals a bunch of clothes off the rack to stand around and then uh, have a very awkward conversation with his mom on purpose. You know, how do you talk to your mom that's dead that you haven't seen in forever and, like, you know you have to kill? This is a very heavy concept that's going on, right? You have to die. Uh, I thought, I know that we talked about, let me try, let me dial some that back. I said it was awkward. I, I think it's awkward in the script of, like, what's happening. I, it's, it's not awkwardly portrayed. I think it's awkward in the fact of, like, Barry has to be awkward here because this is a very yeah. very intense situation. Yeah. I, I liked this scene. I liked it. It got me choked up because it is that thing of like, you know, being a dad and all this other shit like reconceptualizes everything, right? And so that idea of if I don't get to see Ben grow up, him come back and try to talk to me and something like that. Somebody who doesn't have any personal ties to it, I thought it was awkward because of Ezra Miller's acting. I Like this, this should have 100% hit an emotional high and the whole time it just... There are certain moments with certain line deliveries that I don't know if we're supposed to kind of like be laughing at the awkwardness or if that's, you know, Barry Allen trying to play a certain way. It just, it didn't hit for me, unfortunately. I, I really wanted it to. This whole kind of, from here on out to the end of the movie, I just feel like uh, missed a bit for me. More than anything, I thought this scene, uh, I, I think, again, it's the character's the portrayal, it's the direction of what they're giving uh, Ezra Miller to work with. The mom's performance was so good. And I know for some people, I think they were jarred by, why would you hug this kid? And I think it is very much that she's a, that good of a mom, that she sees this, this guy that she doesn't know, but kind of does, right? She looks in his eyes, and again, similar to Iris, I think she gets that there's something here more than meets the eye, but it's just like, well, I'm going to hug you. I'm going to take care of you like you're my son. Uh, Miller, uh, quick question. Are you going to set up a code word with your son in case you're ever in this situation? That's a great question. Yeah. You know what? I think I will. <laughs> yeah. But again, like you have to understand I'm a cool dad. I would, he, he could just say, Dad, it's me from the... Oh, my God. Well, I mean, yeah, it's you. All right, Ben. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to flip out. I'm a out. cool dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ben turned... <laughs> Yeah, but like, blood, you're you know. not going to believe him, though, right? Like, he needs, you need to... We'll, cut, we'll cross that bridge when we time him gets there. Yeah, I, I uh, unlike a couple of people at this table, I think, do really like Ezra Miller's performance as The Flash, and I always have. I think it can go over the top, and it every single time does in ways that could be bad over, overall. But I don't have ties to Barry Allen as a character from any specific oh, property no. before. So. Wally West, different story. Um, or, or and the Flash period. Um, so to me, I'm like, I like this. It feels a little different. Sometimes I, I feel it can get a little icky in, in some ways, but I think that overall, I like it, and it allows it to feel a little bit different than some of the other super smart characters we see. And the fact that he's like the Flash, and it's like the super uh, frenetic, like kind of fast thing, works for me. Um, and I think that the performance here and the way he deals with his mom also worked for me. And what Greg's saying about her performance and all that, I thought was so powerful. But just the lines of, of her being like, moms like to be visited. It's just like, oh, for somebody that can't visit their mom. Like, that is just so ridiculously heartbreaking, and it just tears you apart. And I just feel like they set it up really well with the monkey stuff. And, like, this isn't quite an I Love You 3000 thing, but having the I Love You, like, the moments of him thinking about that uh, with her is just like, it, it worked for me in a way that, like, I, I was, like, legitimately crying at this point, and that's just because of my situation with my mom right now. But um, it was, I thought, very, very well addressed and realized, and I know that not everyone's going to connect with it the same, but it, it was a moment for me where I was like, wow, this is kind of the weird power of movies that, like, you can fixate on one thing and one weird line that's not going to hit people the same way at all can, like, tear you the fuck apart. Sure, um, for so sure. I didn't expect that from The Flash, I'll tell you that. 100%. Uh, and then, even though... This entire conversation we're talking about him having with his mom proves it. Then Barry really proves that he's learned absolutely fucking Zero. nothing. Absolutely where he not. goes like, wait a second, right, the camera, how can I get my dad to look up? He moves all the cans so that when he runs back, of course, they're just completely forgetting that time isn't linear and this is going to fuck something up along the way. And in that moment, I go, oh my God, he's his dad. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I for a second was like, oh shit, he's his dad. It's like in Harry his Potter with dad... the Patronus with the fucking deer. Yeah, exactly like, oh, like he was that. him the whole time. Exactly. His dad like that. did kill his mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he fly wow. he runs back to the present, of course. Uh he gets there and is uh then we're uh, treated to him getting home, but then he's gotta run to his dad's trial in the morning. Uh of course he runs to the courthouse where there's a man eating a hot dog. He steals the hot dog, and who's the man, Tim? I don't know. The director, Andy. Uh, uh, he steals the hot dog from the director of the movie in his cameo. Uh, chows down to that, comes in. <laughs> the trial's already going. <laughs> like, just like, oh, man, you couldn't run yourself back like 
another five minutes or whatever. And he's like, anyways, though, <laughs> we have this footage that's been restored by Wayne and every, it corroborates the story. And sure as shit, he looks up and you're like, yeah, that's the guy from The Conjuring. And it's like, he's, he's innocent, y'all. Even though me and Kevin are both like, still could murder his wife. It wasn't yeah. like he came home and she had been dead for an hour. She came home and had just been stabbed. So yeah, it's like, still nah. one. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know if this really holds up for the album. Well, I mean, if you, if you want to argue about it, there's not one other person in that store that could have corroborated he was there at that point. You know what I mean? Whatever, Come on. It's big. Yeah. Uh, anyways, though, so guess what? He's going to be released. Everything's great. Huzzah! Uh, Barry walks out with Iris, and the celebration continues, and then he gets a call from Bruce Wayne on the phone, and Bruce Wayne says, oh, man, this is awesome. Congratulations. I'm pulling up right now. And I was like, this is Michael Keaton, right? It sounds like I Michael Keaton. I thought it was Keaton. Michael Keaton. I, I, I wonder... I'm looking forward to seeing it again on my own with not in a theater and being able to yeah. hear. Is that Clooney or is that, did they use Keaton's voice there? They played this off long enough that you're like, oh, it's definitely not what it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's definitely not Batflix. So yeah. what's it going to be? The car drives up and I was like, there's no way it's just Keaton. Like that's, that's not good enough. They'd done but, this too long yeah. for it to be just like, be that's Keaton. Not a, that's not a moment. Yeah. I just did not see this coming, Greg. Yeah. He's it's awesome. awesome. <laughs> but George Clooney steps out of the car. Comes over to Barry and you're like, you're not good. Batman. Is there something wrong with you? And then his, to- his tooth pops out and that's the thing there. But like when it popped out, I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. Also, the most obvious reshoot of the movie. And I'm because I'm sure there's a bunch that I just didn't catch. But like this is the one where like Ezra Miller's standing out there like, oh, this wasn't it. And this has always been the rumor that this was supposed to end with Michael Keaton becoming the new, the, be, being the Batman of this, the DCEU, right? And then they killed that, and then they did this, Bad and then girl. so many fucking rumors about what actually happened that I was waiting to get here and be mm. like, where are we going to leave yeah. Batman and Bruce Wayne at this point? We leave it with George Clooney, because they're like, guess what? It doesn't matter. Honestly, We're never coming back here. Chris Anka Love. had uh, told me that, I guess maybe early, super early screenings never fully revealed who it was, that it's just like you just see his face covered or whatever. Like you never see who the actor is in the movie ended there. Mm. So yeah, you mentioned these reshoots The I, I guess I was, I had already kind of like stood up just to like get ready to go to the restroom. <laughs> it was a great gag. Again, I thought it was I awesome. It was a great way of like, yo, this movie is like so many of these fucking movies come out and they're like, well, they're in the universe, but they don't need to be connected to the universe. And, and this is its thing where whether like Aquaman is still coming and I, Aquaman is not going to reflect the events of the flash probably. Right. So it's like, it's fun to have this. It's cool to end this. And I assume that this is its own, now its own little multiverse thing of what Barry's doing. And even though I, you know, what Aquaman is going to do about it, whatever. Anyways, though, I enjoyed it. I thought it really fit. I really loved this movie. We get a whole bunch of credits and then we get the, the credits with the dog falling. I oh, thought, right. Which is a, a great little end cap on this of like, yeah, remember the stuff from the beginning? This is the tone of this movie. You enjoyed this movie. Yeah. Everyone here, you enjoyed the flash. Come on. Yeah. Let's wow. End, and like, <laughs> let's end it with a really great post credit scene. No, not so much. Jason Momoa, Arthur Curry's pulled out of a bar. He's super drunk. And he's like, well, you're telling me, uh, Rary, that I was uh, fucking Aquaman? This reminds me of all just like Snyder DC stuff. And I was just like, and I'm like, I was so confused because I'm like, all right, so he's not Aquaman in this universe. And then he buys some drinks with this. This is uh, this is Atlantean treasure. I'm like, so is he Aquaman? Is he just can Aquaman not drink in this universe? I don't. Oh, he's 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 in puddle of water. All right, that's the end. Let's go home. So my read on this, Greg, and I don't know where I'm pulling this from, but I think that he goes, he leaves Clooney and goes back to the main universe and his talent, because there's lines in this postcard thing of him talking to Aquaman, and he's essentially saying like, and there was this Batman here and there was this Batman there. Like, I think, I think that this is him going back to. Doesn't he say though? Um, yeah. Like, no, he, yeah. Aquaman says everything's the same except for, or like a bunch of the people are the same except for Batman. No, I th- I I thought I heard him say, I th- I thought Jason Momoa said, oh man, and like, you're, there's there's an Aquaman that's like me, and he's like, yeah, you're consistent across, you're consistent, and I mm-hmm. thought he was saying that you're consistent to my Aquaman. All I know, all I know is that this scene was a pleasant reminder of why this all has to end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real bad, real bad, real bad. I saw, I didn't. And it was at this it. moment I saw a mouse run underneath Nick's seat. No, you didn't. He did, and he waited till today to tell me, which was the right <laughs> thing to do. Didn't your wife also see a mouse? That's in why the we stopped going to Kabuki Theater. She was like, that place has rats. I found a whole rat in my Cobb salad. That's a quote, that's a quote <laughs> from Jesus Talladega Christ. Nights. That's, 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 I can't feel that. I'm going to read this. I'm going to re- listen here. What are you reading? TikTok has the whole movie. Hold on. Mike's probably watching it as we speak. For podcasters, Mike's trying to listen really to the end of the movie. The whole movie? Oh, yeah. It always does. Sneaks it's not into even this, out yet. They get yeah, the they exclusive. sneak into the screenings like we, like we get, and they just they record it. 
sounds great. I'm listening right now. Yeah. This, he is not, that's not our Aquaman. He's like, on the other timeline, I'm the same guy. He's like, yeah, pretty much. You're lovable, this, that, and the other. So he's talking to, about the Aquaman we know from the Aquaman movies. Mm. He's still in this time. Interesting. So you think Barry pulled the treehouse of horrors and was like, he sits down. Don't touch table, anything. I'll touch that, anything I want. But he sits down with the Simpsons and everything looks right. He goes, finally back. Close enough. They all they just like with yeah, the yeah, shoot like, their close thumbs enough. Close enough. <laughs> Baggy, bag you. Ragu. Bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast. Within the podcast, Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, where we rank all the villains of the DCEU. Currently, our list looks like this. There are 14 entrants on it, and it goes number one, Butterfly, comma, Judo Master, comma, White Dragon from Peacemaker. Number two, Starro slash Waller slash Court. Corta Maltese from the Suicide Squad. Number three, Black Mask and Zaz from Harley Quinn. Number four, Zod from Man of Steel. Number five, Doomsday and Lex from Batman v Superman. Number six, Steppy slash Darkseid from the Snyder Cut. Number seven, Maxwell Lord slash Cheetah from Wonder Woman 84. Number eight, Thad from Shazam. Number nine, Sir Pat and Wonder Woman. Number 10, Ocean Master slash uh, Manga, but we mean Black Manta and Aquaman. Number 11, The Daughters of Atlantis in Shazam 2. Number 12, Steppenwolf and Joss- Justice League. Uh, number 13, The Literal Devil and Black Adam and Black Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And number 14, yeah. Enchantress and her baby brother in Suicide Squad. Where do we want to rank Barry. Reverse Flash, Zod, and, and Barry? I mean, Barry. Barry. Yeah. Ezra yeah. Miller. Yes. Yeah, Ezra Miller. Yeah. I mean, honestly, pretty high. Like, on this list, like, I, I don't know that I'd put it above the first one. I would not put it above the first one, actually. Like, the judo judo was great, and um, the, the, the butterflies in general such, were such great. Yeah, horrible, yeah. horrible plot. The butterfly twist and all that. But, like... Starro and all that. I'd, I'll put this above that. I'd put this at number two. A more compelling. Yeah. A more compelling for sure. Yeah, I'm down for that too. I yeah. think, again, with Barry being the bad guy, as he often is in these uh, I fucked up time things. Yeah. He makes a lot of dumbass decisions. So, yeah, that works for me. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. On uh, the DCEU, Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, uh, you get number one, Butterfly Judo Master and the White Dragon from Peacemaker, the show. And then, of course, we're now adding uh, Barry, Reverse Flash, and Zod to the second slot from The Flash. And now it's time to rank the DCEU. Currently, number one, we have Peacemaker. Number two, The Suicide Squad. Number three, Birds of Prey. Number four, Wonder Woman. Five, Shazam. Six, Batman v Superman. Seven, Man of Steel. Eight, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Nine, Shazam Fury of the Gods. Ten, Black Adam. Eleven, Aquaman. Twelve, Wonder Woman 1984. Thirteen, Justice League. And fourteen, Suicide Squad. I would like to start the bidding. Go for it. I... I'm going to say it's going to be controversial for sure, but I'd like to make my case for it. I would say number one. Again, in the decade of doing DCEU, right, I've wanted to see the Justice League on the screen. I've wanted to see the superheroes I love done justice on the screen, right? And that has been such a struggle. And I already said it at the top of the show, but I'm happy to say it here at the end again. Like, this isn't the universe I wanted, but it's the universe I got kind of thing, right? Peacemaker is hands down must watch television you know or content whatever you want to call it right i'm not trying to sidestep that like i love peacemaker i think it is a more well put together story character yada 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 for a dc in review i want to go watch superheroes do superhero stuff this is what i want because even with peacemaker it was i can't believe how good this is God, I wish this was Superman or Batman or The Flash mm-hmm. or Green Lantern or what, the list goes on, right? Of just all my heroes they've done wrong. So for me, this is my number one because it's the best superhero outing I feel we've had. Now, that isn't comedy, isn't it you know, this, that, the other. Like, oh, I'm not trying to take away from Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad by James Gunn or Peacemaker or anything like that. Or even Birds of Prey, which I also enjoyed, but didn't feel like, oh, I'm in the DC universe. I'm watching my heroes that I grew up with that I love so much. So for me, this is my number one. Greg, you and I disagree on everything. We do. You wanted to call the company mouth pudding. I said, that's a terrible idea. Yep. Terrible idea. Yep. But on this, I'm happy to say we can come across the aisles and agree on. This is the most fun I've ever had sitting in a the theater watching a DC movie by far. Was it, is it the best movie on the merits of storytelling alone? I don't know. But as far as inter- sheer entertainment value of being a comic book movie, making me feel like I'm a kid again, super fun vibe, great action sequences all the way through, this has to be number one for me. I'm putting this at number three. You son of a below bitch. James Gunn's The Suicide Squad and above Birds of Prey. 
I just appreciate the consistency of the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I'm in a tough spot here. You're in the magical spot. I think that it is... What Greg said, I'm really with. I think Peacemaker is better. I don't think there's really an argument there. I think the quality and depth of the characters and what they got going on, the hit or miss ratio of jokes is at least equivalent, if not better, in Suicide Squad than The Flash is. Um, what I'm thinking about the movie side of things, of, Bur of the Suicide Squad movie versus The Flash, I struggle to really remember Suicide Squad. I, I, I remember it was funny. I remember Starro was there. I remember little things, so but I don't really open. remember that movie. I'm going to remember The Flash forever. Like, I'm going to remember so many things about The Flash. So I think on a movie side, I'd put it above it. When I'm debating between The Flash or Peacemaker at number one, I think the quality of Peacemaker makes it hard for me to say otherwise. I need you to close your eyes, Tim. I need you to close your eyes and listen to your heart. I'm listening to my heart. I'm, listen I'm, to I'm, your I'm heart. putting Flash at number one. I'm doing it. Because Woo! of how big a surprise it was, because of how fun it was to watch. Again, I think Peacemaker's better. Arguably, Suicide Squad is, is better as well. But I think that in terms of the entertainment and fun and just, again, they paid off us watching all these damn projects with this yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, so I'm going number one. Tim, mm -hmm. you nailed it. Thank you. Kevin, you were going to whisper something? Oh, I was just disappointed. I think it should have been number three. Yeah. Andy was right. He no, was shouldn't have given wrong. up your vote. You went in the you went in the red Kryptonian chamber over there like in Superman 2. That's on yeah, you. That's true. Just like that. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> uh, we will return, everybody, to the DCEU in just one and a half months for Blue Beetle. No fucking way. No. Oh, yeah. That's a fucking oh, no. half away. Uh -huh. Our new Holy number one, shit. ladies and gentlemen, Blue Beetle. The first we'll DCU character. Not the first DCU movie. Wrap your head around that, everybody. Get ready for George Lopez, baby. Get ready for George Lopez. <laughs> Prepare yourselves. You have a month and a half. <laughs> the hierarchy of Georges in the DCEU is about to change. Let us know in the comments below what you think of The Flash, what your favorite moment was, and ex how excited you are to see George Lopez <laughs> in just a month and a half, everybody. The Georges are back, baby. <laughs> the Georges are the back. George uh, are back in town. A quick thing for you, because we want to get this uh, video out um, quicker than normal, just because it's The Flash. It's a big deal. Greg Miller, DC, all that stuff. Uh, there are two in-reviews out this week. We already had Transformers Rise of the Beasts on Monday. This is posting on Friday. Because of that, there will not be an in-review posting next week. Um, when we return, it will be Elemental from Pixar. Unless they put out a version of The Flash that's in like black and white with some extra footage in the next couple days. You're right. You're right. There's always that potential. Uh, let's hope not. Until then, love you all. Goodbye. Goodbye.